Did you ever think you would make it? Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm so close, I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Yeah. Value came in, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to hate. And how they run, homie, look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. So, uh, folks, we're learning uh, different languages today uh, uh, from a very uh, renowned uh, heart surgeon uh, who somehow became, uh, decided to uh, uh, change. Can you imagine your heart surgeon? Okay, that's what you're doing for a living. Okay, and then all of a sudden, one day you're inspired to want to be a comedian. Okay, because you watch a guy named John Stewart, which we talked about yesterday. Mm-hmm. He just recently chose to part ways with uh, Apple over them not letting them do shows on. China. AI in China. And so, you man, you, I can just visualize you as a heart surgeon. In the middle of a heart surgery, he's telling all the nurses jokes. And, <laughs> oh, this one we messed up. <laughs> Oops. This, is, this yeah. one's gone. It's not going to work. Anymore. You don't need this. You don't you? It's just your heart. I'm going to be a comedian. So, heart surgeon, you would assume you're doing well for yourself. You're making money. you got respect. You've gone to school. Then you take the risk to go be a comedian. And you don't just become a regular comedian. A third of your country is listening. you got 40 million, give or take, weekly listeners to your show, and then you're being invited all over the place. And then recently, some of you may recognize him because of the podcast or the show that he did with uh, Pierce Morgan, which the angle he took was very different satire, comedy. It almost confused Pierce. It was so confusing that Pierce had to get on a plane to go to L.A. at the comedy club to interview him. And it was a great uh, uh, encounter back and forth, yep. uh, gave a different perspective to everybody. But today... We have in the flesh, Basim Yosef. How are you, sir? Hello. <laughs> From the I'm... other side. <laughs> Can you hear it? I'm a little bit under the influence. Yeah. And the influence meaning that I'm still under uh, heavy pain medication. How long did you, you, you tr- you've been traveling? 48 hours. So, so just le- in five days. Five days. In five days. I, I took the plane from L.A. Yeah. To Dubai. 48, 48 hours, and then I went from Dubai to Boston for 36 hours for uh, another shows in Arabic and Kenyan. Then went from Boston to Dubai again for another. Oh time. my God! And then that was less than 24 hours. And then I took the flight from Dubai to Miami. I just landed yesterday. Oh my God! Yeah. And then you're performing. And I'm performing tonight. Tonight and tomorrow. A- and after tomorrow. And after tomorrow. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday at the Miami Improv. <laughs> <laughs> So you're fired up, is what you're saying. You're I am so excited, but I cannot hide it. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's very I'm obvious. Just so I got a question for you. I mean, seriously, like before, we got, we got a lot of things we're going to get into. I, got, I want your thoughts on a lot of different stories and, yeah. you know, uh, uh, whether it's some current events, your background, politics. We'll talk Israel. We'll talk Palestine. We'll talk Egypt. We'll talk all that stuff. What was the turning point for you? Like, did, did people always know you were funny? Like, when I, when I talk to a comedian... I say, at what point did you know you were funny? You know, well, when I was 10 years old, my dad would tell me, hey, you know, go out there and perform and make everybody laugh. And if all my fr- dad's friends, like Vinny, my dad's friends would watch me and I'm like, oh my God, this kid's so funny. Oh, when I was, tw- our life was so hard and, you know, it was all about, you know, comedy was the, what, you know, kind of lowered the temperature for me where I could use it and, you know, with laughter and all this stuff. If you're a surgeon, you went to school 10 to 12 years to be a surgeon, right? So at what point did you know you were funny and you may want to consider a career in comedy. I never thought that I was funnier than usual. There was actually people in my school that were funnier. They're the ones who are much cooler with the girls. I never had a girlfriend, so I was like an okay guy. You never had a girlfriend. Stop. I never had a girlfriend. With those eyes, you never yeah. had a girlfriend. Never, never, because I couldn't know how to speak to women. Uh, I uh, till so so when I finished my primary school, the, the elementary school, my parents took me took me into a, a much richer school, much more expensive school, and my parents were uh, uh, university professors and judges, so they only like they were government employees, so they can kind of scrapped in order to push me to that. To be, that was the best school in in town, mm. which is great, but the problem is you end up with all of the rich kids. So you feel that you're less, you feel you're not like that. So people didn't mind me. They were not mean to me or anything, but I wasn't boyfriend material. I played sports very well and I was a nerd. That's, so I was like a typical nerd who was like glasses and nobody wants to talk to him. But I, w- I, I wasn't cool. I was one of the cool kids with, the, with all of the experiences and the money. And then when I finished medical, when I finished the school, I went to the medical school. Now medical, medical school there are uh, Arab, uh, not Arab, um, government 
So everybody from all over the country comes in, all of mm-hmm. the people who go to the free schools. And these, are, these people are they're like nerds, <laughs> big time nerds. So I come in, I am from the rich school. Now I am the, <laughs> I'm the, the soft kid from the kid's school. Yeah. You're now <laughs> so, the elite. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm the elite. And then I, uh, so I, I always felt that I'm out of place. I never felt that I belong to anybody. And uh, w- whether or not you're funny or not, well, there's other doctors who are funny. People make fun in the operating room. But the fact that actually you do a show, that was not even there. So it just took, a, took me like three, four YouTube videos that I produced it, put it online, didn't think about it at all, and it just like blew up. Wait, but you have to know like before you've had glimpses of you make people laugh and get a reaction. No, like... You, you know how a girl knows she's beautiful. I don't know what it is to be a beautiful girl, but I would assume this girl at 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, she's like, why are grown men checking me out? Why is it that they look at me the way they do? Or a man that all of a sudden you see how a woman looks at you, you're like, you can read a lot when you see someone's eyes, right? You never had a glimpse of people watching you and saying this guy is super funny and likable? No, I, I had people think that I'm funny and people think that I'm not. It's just like I was like I'm not I was not out, pretty of, wild. out yeah. of the range. Like I thought this was, guy was supposed to be a funny guy, Pat. I'm out of here. No, no. <laughs> what I, for me, what I mean by this is wild is when the camera's on and you're performing, like you've been doing this your entire life. You know, you've been you've been making people laugh and think and satire. You've been doing that for a long time. Your show was on for, for what, three years? Three and a half years. Three and a half years, and it was the top show. Yeah. Everybody's watching it. Everybody, yeah. you're... But it wasn't because of me. The whole idea that I just chose a different direction to make it um, funny but also deep. So the people, that the, the, the crazy jokes... I wouldn't write that. I wouldn't be writing that crazy jokes. It's about the direction and how to uh, utilize these jokes and utilize the the direction. So a lot of people come to me like, ah, jokes, ha ha. I said like, and I will tell them these jokes are not taking us anyway. You're just like these are circular jokes. My 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 style was how can we use the jokes in order to um, advance what we want to say. So me, I was kind of like the older guy. And by then, by that time, I was older. I was 37. All of the kids were like 24. So they were all about like the zingers and the punchline. And it's like, yes, we're going to use that. But in what context? Mm. So for me, it's more of like I'm the manager. I'm telling them like we need to have the the, 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 the comedy. We need to have it there because there was other political satire show, but they all failed because they were all about like the, the cheap laughs, the cheap laughs, the, the quick laughs. For it me, was sticks versus storytelling. Yeah, yeah, for me, it was like all about like storytelling. Yeah. It was like a beginning and a middle and an end of what that segment, what will it be like, what, how, how the people would leave feeling about that. So that was me. Interesting. But I'm, I w- as a kind of like ha-ha comedy, hilarious, I was not the best one. When you were on Pierce, did you... Did you write? Did you write what you were gonna say? Or you just kind of said it. You didn't know what you were gonna say. No, I, I'm a nerd. I write everything. Uh-huh. So when you went on Pierce, you were prepared on what you were gonna tell Pierce. Uh-huh. Oh, God. Okay. Now this makes sense. Yeah, he had a chart. No, 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 the, no. But the, the liner. The, the, I'm not talking yeah. about the chart. The whole the thing number. about the Homelander. That's what I'm saying. About the yeah. narcissistic psychopath. All of that was planned. All of that was planned. Okay. Now this makes sense. Got so it. you're a preparer. Is what you would say. Yeah. You're an over preparation type of guy. Yeah, and the whole thing when I told him, like, so what does, how does Israel think that that will go on? It's like, well, in order to um, intimidate the people and make some sort of them, well, you just compared Israel to ISIS. So all, all of these traps, I it was it was prepared. Mm-hmm. And I what year it. did you make this transition from the medical field to comedy? That was 2011. Uh, 2011. 2011, I was. Uh, at that time, I was an attending doctor. I uh, had my master's, I had my MDs, and I, I passed my USMLE exams, and I already applied to um, a, a fellowship in Cleveland. And I was waiting for it, and as I was waiting, the Arab Spring happened. So I, I made these videos, and I thought, like, you know, maybe I'll put these videos, like, online or something, and after one year, somebody will discover me and get me as a writer on a television show like that. <laughs> So the the in two weeks it went viral and then by three weeks I'm just getting television offers. Who called you? Who called you first? Uh, everybody, uh, Al Jazeera, Al Hayat, CBC, uh, on TV, all of these like the local channels, mm-hmm. and then some of the gen- uh, the regional channels start starting to call, and then we end up with a smaller television show. They didn't give us the big amount, the biggest amount of money, but they gave us a little bit of freedom. And then after one episode, we started to go do, wanted to do with live audience. 
And uh, and I did that because I visited uh, John Stewart offices to shadow his team. And I didn't, I wasn't asking for more, just, just one selfie with John. But then he came in, it's like, oh, I know about you. Would you like to come on the show? It's like, yes. So he invited me on the show. <laughs> and then we made a promise. It's like, do you promise me to come to the show if I made it a live audience show? He said, I promise. A year later, he came to my show. That is so cool. Yeah, awesome. what, yeah. what year was that that you went to see John Stewart? I went to see him 2011 and 2012. Okay. He, he came to my show. So 2011, I'm just trying to understand so, your so background. 2012 and then 2013 he came. So 2011, the, the Arab Springs going on in you know 2005, 2006. It's going on in Egypt. The, 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 the Arab Springs started 2011. Oh, there wasn't. Okay, wasn't there an earlier? Okay. No, no, that's so right. back to Egypt, you had uh, El Sisi. Uh, now you had Mubarak. You had um, Morsi. All the, all the upheavals going on no, let, let, in your country. Let, let me let me give you. So before 2011, Mubarak yeah. was there. Mubarak was for there for 30 years. Yeah. And when when I, and I joke about this, like I was like, oh my God, you had a president for 30 years, and I say in the Middle East, that's a very short. <laughs> the first, first term. term. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, and then, uh, so Mubarak didn't survive 2011. Mm -hmm. He was taken over by the the army. And then they did elections, Muslim Brotherhood won the election. So now it's like an mm -hmm. Islamist kind of, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's an Islamist uh, authority. Mm -hmm. So uh, when they, someone is an authority, you make fun of them. So of course the Islamist who used to like me, now said like, oh, you're doing this because you, you hate Islam. You're an Islamophobe. We have, we have that things too. You guys have Islamophobe? Yeah, if you make, th th listen, words like Islamophobe, transphobe, racist, uh, anti-Semite, whatever, all of this is used in order to shut down conversation. Mm -hmm. So I instead agree. of actually trying to have you, like uh, if I say something about Islam or about Islam, uh, political Islam, you can discuss like uh, discuss the uh, thing about whatever is happening with Israel, mm -hmm. what's happening, with, or you can just shut it down. Oh, you're anti-Semite. That's you're right. Islamophobe. Yeah, and th that that is like a, a very simplistic and conversation killer. Uh, yeah. Back to uh, what I was asking. So you meet John Stewart. You know they say that luck is when preparation meets opportunity, right? Like you're starting to be a medical doctor, but obviously you you're politically savvy. You know what's going on, socioeconomic. You understand Islam. You meet this Jewish guy. <laughs> John Stewart, you know, we just saw you do the uh, Mark Twain Award where you sarcastically, you know, poured love out to him. It was, it was a great speech. Describe that relationship. You know, he's a Jewish guy, massive in media. In 2011, 2012, Obama's president. He's still doing The Daily Show. He retires in 2016, right before Trump comes in. Best time for him to probably be there. We all saw what happened on The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. Now he's off. Describe that relationship. What did he do for you? What did you try to mirror with John Stewart? The good, the bad, the ugly. He's Jewish. You're Muslim. Just give us a little background. So I was watching John Stewart since 2003, 2004. We, 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 at that time, we used to watch it on YouTube. And the first time I saw him, I didn't understand what was he saying. So in order to understand, I had to educate myself about Republicans and about Democrats and mm -hmm. about... Uh, I, I, because I, it seems to be very funny, but I didn't understand the political context. So for me, John Stewart became the source of American politics. And I was fascinated how people can make fun of politics that good. So I had this dream of mine for, for eight years that I would have same, a, a certain show like this in Egypt. So I would even like write uh, certain um, like drafts of television shows and make up the, but uh, you know, I, I, and then, but I kind of like left it, like, oh, we're living under a dictatorship, there's no way this book is gonna happen. And then when 2011 happened and the show exploded, uh, the, the, uh, the foreign press started to come and see those people in Egypt, all of those people in the uh, political activists, the revolution. And then, of course, they came and talked to me. And the first English-speaking -speak, English uh, publication was The Daily Beast. Mm -hmm. And on that day, I decided to plug Jon Stewart in every single way possible. So they would say, what's your inspiration? John Stewart. <laughs> what do you eat three times a day? John Stewart. <laughs> Who do you He's dream of? John, John Stewart. Stewart. So, so it worked because the, uh, the um, headline of that article was Bassim Yusuf, the John Stewart of the Nile. And since then it caught up. So my name and John Stewart became synonymous. synonymous. 
Mm, that's great. And that was for me important so they would know I was outside. So when by the time that I did as asked to shadow his team, his team already knows about me. Mm. He already knew about me. Mm -hmm. So when I went in, all I wanted to have like a selfie with him and just shadow his team. But uh. he said he saw me. He's like, hey, dude, how are you? Let's go to my office. We sat in his office. I thought we had sit for five days. We sat down talking for an hour and a half. Oh. Awesome. When, when, so that relationship's built, and you're looking at his style. You're like, well, I'm going to do the same model here, right? But in America, you can get away making fun of presidents and political powers and all this stuff, and you're the first satire TV show in the Middle East type of thing. This is not a business model in the Middle East. It's not like, hey, I'm going to go be the first this. Yeah, there's a reason why there's not this mm -hmm. in the Middle East, right? Because they don't... When was it when you pushed the envelope with a joke or something you're, you guys said where you got a knock and you're like, hey, man, you know, all this stuff is fine, but you're kind of like increasing the temperature and this, this joke is not going to fly here. It was with every single episode. Because, every single uh, episode. Apparently because um, we're trying... We, the, there was political satire in the Arab world before I did it, but it was a kind of satire that avoids the obvious. We talk, we, we don't talk about the president, we talk about the minister. We talk about, don't talk about the prime minister, we talk about like the low life, um, you know, employees. Uh, here, like when the president went out, I would just like mock him. And that was something unprecedented. So when the Muslim Brotherhood came to a power, they were not very popular by many people. They still have like a huge base. So I started making fun of them. And for a lot of the people, it's like, yeah, like those Islamists, yeah, they may had to be making fun. But the Islamists were very angry. Now, when the Islamists were removed by the army, that was the, uh, the, cha the ch challenge because the army is untouchable. The army is much more sacred than religion. Oh. So I started kind of like trading around it, and that was enough for me to get canceled once and twice. I got interrogated and arrested under a Muslim Brotherhood, and I got canceled twice and had my... Um, signal jammed a couple of times under the army and uh, and I was going to jail under the army and then the last minute I left in November 2014. Was it, did anybody know you were leaving or no? What? Did people know you were leaving? No, well they, they came up with a verdict uh, fining me 150 million pounds which is about 15 million dollars at the time <laughs> uh, for uh, for legal issues with my channels. Of course they will choose other kind of they were not going to say because of freedom of speech. So my lawyer said, like, you need to leave the country right now. So the verdict was at 12 noon, 4 o'clock, I was, I was out of out This is November 11, 2014. Yeah. And, and when you left, you're leaving how? Are you leaving, like, uh, underground leaving? No, no, no. Or you just went straight to the airport, but booked a flight? Put, but they didn't, put, they, they, they didn't have time to put my name on the list. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so f from that point, so right wow. now, Basim, like, right now, are they... Like, if you went back, would you be flagged? Would they be like, hey, he's I don't, back? I don't think so. I have an American passport now, mm -hmm. and they're trying to be nice to me, and I don't care. Good. They uh, And they met, sent a lot of people to kind of, you know, it, it's just, you don't, it was with authoritarian regimes like this, you don't know, because one day somebody from them said, hey, it's your country, you need to come back. And the next day, I land in Jordan uh, on the way to Paris, and I get detained to be delivered for the Egyptian. And you don't know who you're talking to. You. Mm -hmm. Like one, one day they tell you, oh, you're my, oh, there's nothing wrong with Basim. You can come any day. And the next day they send me hecklers in my shows in New York to, to spoil my show. This is when? 2014, 2015, 2016. How long did that last? Uh, it, it did that like four or five times. And then, when I, and then the New Yorker wrote about that. It's actually, you can find it in the New Yorker called The Heckling of the John Stewart of Egypt. Uh, I'm, I actually am happy that they have a cartoon of me on the New Yorker. So it's called The ha Heckling of the John Stewart of Egypt. And the reporter there attended it. And he actually described how, here it is, yeah, how the people of the pro-military people were in Washington and New York were, were haggling me and they were shouting at me. And even one of them, uh, went up and sang the Egyptian national anthem hmm. in the middle of my comedy show. So it's 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 crazy. Like one day you're like, ah, oh, you're fine. He, you're our son. You, he's Egyptian. You can come back to your country. And then the next day you do that. Wow. Who, who wants you to shut up? Who wants to keep you silent? You know, you see what happens with Salman Rushdie. There's a fatwa on him. I'm not saying that's the case here. But clearly there's people that are like, shut your mouth. Hmm. Who wants you to keep no, you silent in the most? Any, in any regime... In any regime, you will have the doves and the and the hawks. 
There's always there's always the people. No, every fine thing is fine. It's like no, these should die. Mm. In every single regime, there's always always like that. So I don't. I, I think like the uh, the nicer people want me back, and the kind of like the vicious ones want me dead. So. But the Egyptian regime under Al Sisi specifically. Yeah. Okay. But 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 you'll find that in any regime, not just Sisi. If it was an Islamic regime, you'll find doves and and vultures. Same. But um, yeah, seems that the 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 doves always try to get me get me back, and the vultures want to. <laughs> but at the end of the day, the the hawks or the vultures, as you call them, yeah, they're going to be the resounding voice in yeah. these regimes. Basim, yeah. you, so Basim, you come here, you're in the states, you're doing stand up, you're doing your thing. Are you immediately getting a show signed, working, making money? And are oh, no, you? I was terrible. I came here in a three four years of darkness. Yeah, that's what I'm. Uh, I I tried to do little gigs here, here and there. And uh, I was not making it. It was terrible. And uh, the problem is when you're trying to do something here, you you already have the massive following that followed me in the in the Middle East. Yeah. And then they come and see me doing little things because I cannot come here and just like you know hit the floor running. And my, one of it is the did like some YouTube sketches. I did some stand up, and I sucked because that I I, I needed to learn something in my second language, hmm. and I was not good. Uh, like anybody who's starting anything new, and I'll, I, they would come to my show, and I can see the disappointment in their eyes, and I can very disappointed, and I would like go, go back for very long crying nights, saying I'm done, I'm a has been, uh, and it took me it took me some while. Are to, you married at the time? Like yeah, when yeah, you I'm, came I'm, here, married? I'm married all through. Yeah. Okay, got it. And and while you're going through this, uh, uh, have you made already millions on top of millions of dollars that you've saved so you don't have to make money ever again? Like, Because you're living in New York. It's very expensive to live in New York. No, I, I live in Los Angeles. Okay. At the time, you didn't come to New York. You went straight to LA. No. I uh, I, I went to Dubai for a, fam- okay, a few months, stayed with uh, people who, who helped me, and then I went to uh, northern uh, uh, San Francisco in Oakland. I stayed with people, and then I moved to a small, very small apartment in Los Angeles. Uh, you don't have money at this time. Uh, I do, but it was they were like dwindling. They were like uh, because a lot of stuff that I couldn't get out of Egypt. So uh, so financially, I wasn't very do, doing very well, and and I was just like doing gigs, like speaking in universities or whatever. But I said I cannot do go to university, speak to say the same thing all over and over again. So I just started to do my own act. So I started doing stand up comedy, and in the first two years, it it, it was terrible. So. The little money I had, I went to hire comedians to so they can see me perform. I didn't hire them to write me jokes because I I knew what kind of story I would I would tell, but I want them to kind of punch up my style. It's not it's not also about the uh, writing. Mm-hmm. It's about the cadence and the rhythm, and the speed and the delivery, which is different from one language to the other. So I had to learn that in a language that's not mine. Huh. So you can you can say it's, it's not like a getting like an Arabic joke and you translate it into English. So I had to kind of rewire my brain, and it was terrible as I as I said in the beginning. And only two years ago it became better, and my English stand-up comedy has actually been touring and filling like theaters and uh, and, and comedy clubs. So it's been going well. And so when the Piers Morgan came. It seems that it came in the right time because if the Piers Morgan came, thing came like two two years ago, I wouldn't have been ready. People will come and see; they will see like a bad show. But now they come to see someone. Oh, he's actually like a good comedian, whether in English and in Arabic. So I think it's it is the timing was perfect. And there's not there's not that many people about some that can do, b- b- like both language yeah. stand up comedy. So you're doing an hour an hour. Uh, yeah, uh, the Arabic show is a little bit longer an hour and a half the English show is an hour yeah and uh, we've been doing now very new experiences so just the improv in Irvine I did a whole weekend in Arabic and that's wow. the first time ever like a, that's cool. a franchise comedy club will actually host something that's not in English here in Miami I'm doing two Eng- two Arabics and three English in the same weekend that's awesome so the the, the fact that you bring in another language to the comedy club, not just that you're bringing another audiences to come see That's English right. and Arabic. The what they love about the the other um, com- comedy clubs, they say you bring people that they we never see, 
because Arabs is not part of their culture to come and stand up comedy show. They go out to eat, the movies, cinemas, yeah. malls, mm. to come in and get seated and listen to comedy. Someone speaking to them like that. Yeah, that's very new. And I'm pretty sure because we're you know we're Middle Eastern. I can't only imagine because that rarely happens. An Arabic guy coming to do stand up comedy. Imagine the audience, but imagine the response of people like. Hey, where are all these damn brown people coming from? Yeah. People must be shocked. Like, who the hell are all these? But you know, there, there's, an, there's an element to that that happened in golf, right? Tiger uh, started playing yeah, golf. Exactly. You know, everybody's like, hey, hey, you know, I'm interested. You know, I, yeah. I thought it was only a white man's sport. Exactly. No, I want to play the game. Yep. And and you bring, you know, there's a, some of that happens a little. Like when I went to Maz's show, Maz had a bunch of, you know, Iranians. Persians, you yep. know. Even Tehran. Tehran is an interesting character, yeah. right? The black Persian guy black getting up and there and red. funny as hell. Yeah. He, you know, first time I saw Tehran perform was, man, probably over a decade ago. Mm -hmm. And he says, let me guess. You look like an Iranian finance guy that drives a 750 BMW. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting next to Jen. I'm like, oh, shit, I came with the BMW. <laughs> 750. Bingo. Yeah, so, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, it's great to see that. It's great to see what's happening now, the fact that the timing of it, of when it took off, where you actually are able to also deliver on the performance side. Let's talk about... Uh, uh, actually, me, me and Mezen uh, Tahran are going to, together to Dubai, May 24th. Oh, fantastic. The big double bill. Fantastic. And yeah, Dubai is the, the, one of the few countries in the Middle East where you can just say what you want to say There's without many, the fear of getting your head chopped off? No, you can. You know, you have Dubai, you have Bahrain, you have Kuwait, you have uh, the Gulf states. Lebanon, you have yeah, Lebanon, too. Lebanon, Jordan. I, I, I played on all of these. But not Egypt? Uh, not me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's uh, actually like uh, Russell Peters was just in, in Egypt. So. Was he? Are there any Middle Eastern countries you just would not feel safe going or just... Complete, completely uncomfortable going there telling jokes. What, what countries? For now, for me, Egypt. Straight up. Mm. Like, would you go to Afghanistan? Would you go to Iraq? Would you go to Syria? Afghanistan, no. Syria, no. Iraq, no. no. Would you ever perform in Israel? <laughs> no. You would not? No. Why? They would accept you. I don't accept them. <laughs> <laughs> you don't accept Israel, the state of Israel? No, I don't accept them taking care of me getting in. That's no problem. The problem is when you go in in Israel, it's not about going in Israel or not. It's that the fact that they really show you a terrible time. You go in and the security, they treat you like shit. Really? Yeah. I mean, I've been invited by Palestinians a lot to go to there. So like, I would go to you, but like, I don't want to deal with the border control of Israel. It's just they, because they humiliate you. They treat and that's because you like, you're Arab or that's yeah. because, because they're my but they have 20% of their population is Arab. They're not leaving. Yeah, but they're treating them like shit. Not, not according to them. I've seen them. I've met them. I met them too. I mean, they, they don't have, um, they, uh, like, you're talking about the 20% of Palestinians? I'm talking about the, the, the 20% Palestinian. of, of Israelis are Muslims, are Arabs. Yeah. If given a choice to move to any other Middle Eastern country, given the state of circumstances in the Middle East, they would choose 100 times out of 100 to stay in the democracy of Israel. Have, Why don't they leave? Have you, have you talked to them about their health care and their schools? Because they're 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 about like twenty five uh, Arab cities that they don't have hospitals or schools. They have to take in Gaza and the West Bank. No, I'm talking about inside Israel. I'm talking about Arabs with Israeli passports, fully fledged Israeli citizens. They don't have a single cinema. They don't have a single hospital. They don't have a single school in their cities, and they have to go to the Jewish states in order to go there. There are many, 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 many daily microaggressions against the Arabs who live in Israel having the Israeli passport. Mm -hmm. Even within the Israeli passport, Israeli community, you have slurs like "Arabi uh, Malukhlach," uh, which actually that's their N word. Mm -hmm. There, uh, I mean, I can go on and on and on. But about slurs the are going to be everywhere in America, where yeah, it's, we're but, all equal. There's slurs. Yeah. Every day I get called a dirty Jew. You think I'm crying? No, I bet like every day here, if you find someone's like nigger, 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 you will, that will yeah, be not like, like yeah. Basically, two hundred years of America. Exactly. But like when you have like a one part of them is much more stronger. Mm -hmm. and actually control the other one, and all they do is like slurs because the Arabs cannot do slurs against the Jews. So why don't they leave? Well, some of them actually, they, because it is basically it is between the sh like a shock and a hard place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are, uh, um, the, the whole idea about like Arabs living a wonderful life. They are living good life compared to other Arabic countries, which is a really low bar.
And the fact right. that I like, can use like a low bar to sell, like, at least they're happy now. It's like I'm living here because I don't know where else to go. I appreciate you saying that because the bar in many, many Middle Eastern countries is very low. I'm not coming here to defend any countries. In I know you're not. I, I, you know, I'm asking I'm, what I'm countries just, you would I'm, go on I'm tour. just saying that the security and the um, in equality that Israel wants you to think that they have it between all of their Arabs, mm -hmm. it is not true. They have something called zoning uh, committees where you as an Arab coming in as, to get an auction, to get a house in a, in a Jewish town, you will not be allowed to take it. And mm -hmm. it happened more and more and more ago, uh, before. It happened in uh, Nazarite elite. It happened in many cities that I actually talked about. The, uh, there was like an auction where they th found that the, most of the people who are getting the, uh, the houses were Arabs and the city canceled the auctions. And they canceled the auction saying that we want to preserve the city of Tarshiha as uh, a Jewish, Zionist, secular country. So I don't know how Zionist, Zionist and, and secular and, and, uh, would get, and, and Zionist come in the same city. So. Mm -hmm. It's well, interesting too, we, what, what question you're asking, right? Because like I'll sit there and, and if you want to read this real quick, I'll sit there and I'll talk to my friends in California. And I'll say, hey, you know, California, this, 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 I hate California. I hate this. I hate that. I hate this. And he was like, well, why don't you leave? I can't leave California. Why can't you leave California? Well, because my family's here. My unit's here. My kids are here. My uncle, my aunt, my grandma, da, 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 da. Okay, got it. But I hate it here. I wish I was living in Texas or I was living in Florida, whatever. Okay. Some people here, I can't believe, you know, da, da, da. Okay, why don't you leave? Well, I can't, you know, this, this, that. We lived in Iran. We left, lived in Tehran for 10 years. And I mean, I went to school there till fifth grade. I read, write, Farsi, everything till I left. And I went to Germany, right? I lived in Germany for a year and a half. And then we finally get here. Like, holy shit, we make it to America, right? It's like a dream. But the, the, the people that, the, it's not the people that can't leave that give the argument of why don't they leave. It's the people that can leave that choose to stay. Why do you choose to stay? Mm -hmm. Like I'd love to have a room full of 50 people who are Arabs who can choose to leave Israel. Why are you not leaving? Make sense? Just to kind of get an idea. What would you say? Why are you not leaving, right? If you have the ability to leave, you can go to a different place. Why, why don't you why, why do 2 million people in Gaza being bombed every single day for 100 days? Why don't they leave? Because that's their land. Right? That, so you can be living in a very shitty situation, but you will not leave because you know that you're not going to get back again. There is those people living in Gaza, 2.2 million people. They're living under subhuman uh, conditions. They could leave. As a matter of fact, everybody pushing them to leave through Sinai or whatever. And say, oh, no, we will not leave because this is our land. Sometimes you get connected to the land and it not, doesn't matter how bad. So to answer your question, why don't you leave? Because mm -hmm. that's their land. Yeah, I'm talking about the Arabs in Israel. But yeah. the... Yeah, because they consider that still their land. Yeah, but the there's so many different ways we can have this conversation. But everything for me comes down to socioeconomics. Okay, to me, I'm always wondering why is the Gaza, the Palestinian plight, at the forefront of the news? <laughs> All right now, we're starting to see Yemen in the news. People don't realize for ten years there's been a civil civil war with the Houthi rebels. Saudis, Sunnis, Shiites, Iranian-backed militants killing each other. Never in the news. Syria, tens and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people murdered. We know what's going on in Iraq. What's going on in Afghanistan. This is not an anomaly in the Middle East. But in my opinion, humbly, with all due respect, what's going on in Gaza is the equivalent of BLM in the States. What do I mean? So black-on-black -black crime Every single weekend in Baltimore, in D.C., in Chicago, you name the city, there's black-on-black -black crime. Let one cop kill a black guy, George Floyd, national, international news. In the Middle East, Yemen, Syria, Lebanon, you name it, Iraq, every day, Muslims are killing other Muslims. A lot of it is Islamists, fundamentalists. There's no, there's no marches. There's no protests. But Israel defends itself after October 7th, and I've seen you condemn Hamas for October 7th, but you've also sympathized with the Palestinians, as you should. But all of a sudden, that's the biggest story in the news. Why the distinguishment? Why can't Muslims say... There's a say difference between comparing conflicts, mm -hmm. civil war, and then allowing 
another country to bomb you from the sky every single day for 100 days. You cannot compare the both. And actually your tone of voice when you mm-hmm. say, oh, there is like black and black, Arabs killing each other. In your undertone is saying, yeah, they don't deserve to live, so let's Israel. Zero percent. This is exactly what you're saying. No, no, this is no, what you're saying. No, that's not what I said. No, no, this is what you're saying. I asked a question, the, yes, you're, you're reading you into you my tone. You have absolutely no sympathy for the Palestinian killing. Because that's not they're, true they're at all. Don't put words in my mouth. No, 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 seriously. I 100% the, the whole, the, have sympathy. The, 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 your, your, your entrance into this uh, yeah. conversation is extremely racist because you say, the, well, the Arabs you're, have you're, been killing each other. First of all, the Arabs that have been killing each other, these are called either proxy wars or civil wars. But you, this is different. Because A, the America is not standing b- behind Saudi Arabia voting every single uh, U- uh, UN resolution, like, like Israel. Israel is killing Palestinians, and nobody can do anything for them in the UN or the Security Council. Right? You can talk about how Saudis are killing the Houthis or the Yemenis or how Iran, mm-hmm. but when they go to the Security Council, America doesn't use the vote, the veto. You know how many vetoes did America use since the inception of the Security Council? How many? Tell me. 88. How many of those were they used in order to protect Israel from a veto? Zero. 56. Oh. The superpower of the world over 50 years used more than 65% of its veto power to protect one, one country. You cannot compare both. So why do you think that is? Why is Israel so aligned with Israel? I'm sorry, why is U.S. so aligned with Israel over... Gaza, I don't know. I mean, there's like a million. Ask yourself. There's a million. There's a million. Why? So why? Do you, why do you, a, I, I want to know. Tell me, because they're white like them. Are they allowed to be? Who's people white? Like them? Well, I mean, uh, a lot of Americans consider Who's white? Israel is the white. But you American. know for for a fact. I know. I know. Most Israelis but are it's, Sephardic and they're brown. It's the perception. So it's bullshit. It's the perception. Be- exactly. It's a perception. You know. So this is this is how Israel like uh, promotes itself. We are a secular. We are dec- a democratic country. I have never seen a secular or democratic country that would actually give contraception shots to its own citizens, to their Ethiopian Jews and make them not to reproduce. And until 2013, they have confessed doing that. They have been doing this for 10 years. That is not a democratic country. I have never li- heard, heard a secular country, a democratic country, that would kidnap little kids from Yemeni Jews in 1950 and then take them away and then tell their parents that they die. And they did that in order to instill um, a Semitic uh, DNA in their population. That's why DNA. That, that's why DNA testing is not allowed in Israel. So, are you uh, pro-Islam? Are you anti-Israel, or both? I'm not pro anything. Or I'm, I'm pro humanity, man. It so am I. It, it so am I. It, it doesn't matter my religion is. I don't care actually, and I can give you a hundred things I can tell you about Islamic countries that they do wrong. So, but say what it. happens? What happens is right now, is that the people who are bombing people only every single day. They are not Yemenis, they're not Houthis, they're not Saudis. They're Israelis. For 100 days, they have, brought, they have dropped almost three nuclear weapons on an open-air prison, and all because of Hamas. Dude, if ISIS was already there, you have no excuse to kill 30,000 people. You can't say words like nuclear weapons when it's not true, boss. I mean, you know that. The, you equivalent, say- the, equivalent, the equivalent of three. No, I can't. I can't. I can't. So now they're dropping nuclear weapons? They That's said, what you're I trying to like sell me no, on I this like, one no, I said like they're dropping the equivalent mm-hmm. of three nuclear weapons. So how many people have died in Gaza? 30,000 people. Okay, according to um, Hamas. Obviously, UN gets their number from Hamas. So but over ha- the last, do you have a number that you trust? No, I don't have any number that I trust. But I'll take your word for it. I don't think that's so. How many? Uh, so how many? But why, so, so but how many? Pe- hundreds of so thousands people, of Muslims how, how, have died how, how in many, the Middle East. How many people in Israel died in uh, October seventh? According to the numbers, twelve hundred. But according then, to who? But the numbers are still being counted. According to whom? According to the IDF. Oh, but I don't trust the IDF. I, whether you do or you don't, those are the numbers that we're working well, with. Well, I'm giving you 30,000 people died, and, my, you, and you said you don't trust them. So wh- wh- I who said, do we trust? I, that's not what I said. I said according to Hamas. Yeah, but so like whether when, I believe when the say, numbers... When you say according to Hamas, it, it's like it's the undertone no, that you, you don't believe you, the numbers. With, with, with all due respect, you're missing my point. Mm-hmm. 30,000, other than the Hamas fighters, because I will, I will stand to kill these people, I, I hope zero civilians die. But, but we know hope, what happens... But they here. die. Of course. Every day. But 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 let's go back to my initial so, my, question. My, my, no, no, no. Let me, ask, is, no, let me ask this question, question and then you can you, stick to my... How, how do you think how many but what about should a hundred, die? Zero. Should we stop? Zero. But they're killing it. Okay, but that's not my point, Basim. My point is this. 30, how, how many can I ask lost the question? their limbs? Can I ask the question? Hmm. And then you can have the full, full response. Hmm. Why is this issue 
at the forefront of the news when hundreds of thousands, since 9-11, 5 million plus people in the Middle East have died. 5 million. Mm. 5 million versus 30,000. Where, where are the marches? Where are the, where are the protests? No, no, you haven't been around. But, no, you just haven't been around. No, but I also read the newspapers. Because, because I see what's going be, on. Because there has, oh, been march, there has been marches against, what, against what's happening in Yemen. There have been massive marches against what's happening in Iraq. If you ask the marches, average person, the difference, they couldn't tell you that the, there's a war in there, Yemen. There is a difference. But if you ask the average American, they know what is exactly the, going on in Israel. Here's the, th- here's the thing. These uh, mental gymnastics where you want to divert people to other conflicts, these conflicts are proxy wars. These conflicts are civil war. Terrible. Horrible. Civil war. There's been civil war happening in all kind of Asian and African country. The only difference is, is that that is a foreign country invading another country, like exactly Russia invaded Ukraine, and then everybody is sitting there. All they ask is ceasefire because one of the people in that conflict is a country that has been uh, financed, given money by the U.S. It is considered as part of the free world because they are secular, because they are democratic, and they are committing war crimes every single day under the eyes of the United States, of the UN, and the Security Council. So, and that is why it is different. Fair enough. So civil wars are totally okay. If it's a civil war, don't look at it. Those are people just Did doing I their thing. Did I ever say that civil war no, but, is okay? No, but you basically equivalized. Let's have a civil war. Five million people die across the Middle East. Yeah, it is terrible. It's, just, it's no big deal. Because usually the civil war is really supported by like two proxy people, and they are like killing each other, and it's terrible, and they're trying to do it. At the same time, those people are not just like killing them. They're killing them, wanted to push them out, openly saying that we are going to push the Palestinians into the Sinai. Basically, that is my country. All right. You the have, only people shouting for the river to the sea are the Gazans. Well, yeah, Palestine will be free. Uh, you know, so what you, does you, a you know, free you know, Palestine you, you, you look know, like? You know, it's the difference between regular oh. people in the street shouting from the river and the sea. Mm-hmm. These are regular people that are carrying flags in the street. You know what's happened on the other side? You have government official like Bidzail, like the the uh, minister of finance. You have Bin Rafir, who is the minister of uh, national security. Both of them, by the way, were uh, arrested many times for acts of terrorism against their own country. Wait, but these are Israeli prime ministers? They are the, these are the ministers. Not the prime ministers, ministers of certain... Yeah, so do you mean to tell me that Yahya Sinwar, who's the head of Hamas, or uh, Mahmoud Abbas, who's the head of the PLO, they're not politically saying from the river to the sea? So if we're going to use so, that equivalent... So, uh, you, didn't, yeah. you, you didn't even finish making okay, me... Go ahead. So first of all, you are comparing a militant group, a terrorist group, with a secular democratic country. This mm-hmm. secular democratic country that I'm telling you about, they have ministers coming up with the map of greater Israel behind of them, and they openly talk about them, which is, by the way, if you don't know, the greater Israel map is from the river to the Euphrates, including part of Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Lebanon, and Syria, and of course, Palestine. So that is the official talk of the official ministers. So you want to kind of ignore this? and you go after random people in the streets with flags saying from the river to the sea, don't you see the comparisons a little bit? Well, up? it's not just random people. It is Hamas, who is the governing body of Gaza. Hamas? But, where, but the, the, Hamas the point of a democracy, what do you mean? Hamas, at the end of the day, they're a in militant Gaza. group. They're a militant group. They're ISIS. You don't take them seriously. Militant group. Don't I'm take them about, seriously. I'm they're the about, leaders of Gaza, Basim. I'm, I'm ta- I'm ta- they were elected in 2006, and as your joke said, yeah, a 30-year... Uh, 2006, when, when nobody actually was alive by then. Like now, like people there, how many people were alive? 50% of Gaza yeah, was not alive know, in so 2006. So if, if you did an election right now... They're not going to be the ruler of Gaza. Yeah, but you didn't do an election. That's the point. Why is that? Why is that? Because basically they kicked out Fatah and the PLO, and they're oh, running yeah. the West and, Bank. And, and, and Israel didn't put them under blockade and kick the shit there, out of there, there is a, an argument to be made there. You think that I'm saying that Israel is completely innocent? Do you think I would say that the U.S. is completely innocent? No, I don't innocent? think you said that. They, we had they, a debacle in Iraq. We had a debacle in Afghanistan. Country, there's no perfect country. There's no, per, there's no innocent country. Listen, this is, this is what you do. And when I say what you do is what America and Israel and all of this, like, pro, let's kill them all. No, you, no, no, no. You, you You've kill, already put words in my mouth. Kill, You've called you, me you, racist. You're saying I, that I want to kill I, everybody. I, I, no, you I've kill, said none you, of those words. You kill people, and then you ask questions later. You kill people, you ask questions later. You, America, that, isn't America, that what Hamas America does? America did. Hamas is a terrorist group. You are comparing Hamas. You, so you, every time you compare Hamas, I'm bringing you to Israel. And, and America, which are supposedly democratic countries. Hamas and ISIS and whatever, these people are not like an exa- good examples, right? I agree. I agree with so when you tell me Hamas, all right, fine, Hamas, horrible people. Let's talk about the leaders of the, of the free world. 
America, they kill first, they ask questions later. And the result, Afghanistan and Iraq. Israel, Disasters. They kill I'm not going to argue with Israel, them on that one. Disasters. Israel, kill later, and then the result, what's happening in Gaza and what's been happening to Gaza. Is, there is no justification for Israel to kill 30,000 people right now. And all the thing about October 7th, many of them. Who, can you tell me where are the decapitated babies? What are their names? Can you get me the names? You want me, can, to, go, can, you want me to go over every dead, decapitated Israeli baby's I, name? I, I think that story was refuted, wasn't it? It was, was refuted it was many fa- times. It, was, it wasn't really. And it was the biggest story. What, what's then? your point? That Hamas didn't kill babies? That I didn't, didn't kill say, women? I say if you have There's a, hundreds of people kidnapped by Hamas. What's your point? No, no, no. They're kidnapped, yes. If I, that you're if, saying that 1,200 people weren't if murdered? If a terrorist group would decapitate people, if terrorist group would burn people, you know what terrorist groups does? They terrorize. They will show them off. Like ISIS, they were burning people in cages. All right? We will not find about the atrocities of rape or about decapitating from other sources because a terrorist group, by design, terrorizes. They will go in with their GoPro. They will show you the babies that they decapitated. They will not go to high orders like, oh, my, we didn't do it because terrorist groups does that. Right? This remember ISIS when they were burning people in cages? Yeah. They like to promote their terror because the terrorist group wanted to right to terrorize the public. We have not seen anything of that. That's we one have, of the most naive comments I've ever heard. We've seen videos, countless videos, of them gang raping women and then blowing their head off while they chop off one of their breasts. We've seen these videos. No, you They've haven't captured, seen it. Well, are you fucking you crazy? Seen it. Of course we've seen these you videos. Seen it. We've seen, you have read we've about seen it. dead bodies littered you have read all over it. kibbutzes. You have I've read about okay. it. Okay. And I can go watch the video. And I can uh, you're and, choosing this is selective I, I, ignorance. This is selective ignorance. That's like me saying if that's like me saying, of course Israel's not bombing indiscriminately. No, they have. And I'm at least willing to own that. And I'm not Israeli, I'm American. By the way, I'm not defending okay. Hamas. They did But you are equivalent. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is all of these like decapitating babies, that is wrong. That never happened. Okay, it was only a few. A few? How many? Dude, I'm what not there the, on the what ground. Are so what's we, your argument? We have, we have pictures what, uh, of Let's every, be clear here. We have what's your argument? That they didn't decapitate no, didn't one baby's I, head? No, no. I, so what are you saying? I said that what the Hamas did was terrible, but it was inflated by things to make it emotional to think that it's okay to kill okay. all of those people. Uh, it was inflated. So it wasn't yeah. 1,200? Well, how much was it? I don't know. Okay. So, 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 Isra- matter, matter, so Israelis' uh, numbers uh, are inflated, uh, 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 twelve hundred, uh, but the thirty thousand from Hamas according is to, not inflated. As a of fact, You're talking out of both sides of your mouth. As a matter of fact, according to Israel, Israeli survivors they said that many of these casualties happened because Israeli um, um, troops came in and indiscriminately killed everybody, including the hostages. Right. That's the first time I've heard that story. I've been first time because you are not covering yeah. because right. you have not listening no. to the survivors from the Israelis. On Every the morning I read credible sources. Wall Street Journal, Fox News, Fox News, Bloomberg. Okay, <laughs> so who? Are, wh- what are you reading? Hamas.com. Like, where are you getting your sources? Haaretz. Okay, Haaretz. Yeah, the, the Israeli the, newspaper. The Times of Israel. Yes, of course. Yeah. I read those too. They have actually brought. I've people. never heard them say one time that twelve hundred people were not murdered. I didn't not say in that. one paper. No, no, no. I didn't say that. Okay. I said many of those numbers that were killed. They were killed because of the indiscriminating interference by the Israeli troops, and many of them died because of... Four people were killed that way no. when they tried to, to rescue the hostages. No, that, that, The that, fact that, that you're trying that to that equivocate you're, you're, 1,200 you're, you're, people... You're late in the game. Basser, you're late it, in the game. There was a woman that was named Dalia. She came out on, a, on an Israeli podcast, and she said that everybody in the kibbutz were died, and then we went out and we said that uh, the Israeli tank, the one that fired on the whole kibbutz. This is bullshit stories. All right. You think the IDF is just coming in and then just spraying down kibbutzes? That's like saying American troops are just coming into a conflict here it's called and the, just spraying it's down called, fellow Americans. It's called the Hannibal. It's bullshit. It's called the Hannibal Protocol. Look it up. Yeah, okay. uh, we'll look uh, it up. But uh, I think that's bullshit. Basan, I want to ask you a question. So going going to that day, uh, all the stuff that we found out since that day, um, we, what, we we found out Rob that uh, they knew apparently they had information intelligence for a year that it was going to happen. The day that it happened, apparently all the defenses were down. Hamas got to run rampant for six hours. Uh, mayhem. They asked, John Kirby went up, and one of the reporters from Fox asked, how did you guys not see this with all the intelligence? And he said, and I quote, now is not the time. Since October, it's not what? three months, October, November, December. We're in January right now. They still don't know. Um, we f- saw this thing called the Jericho Wall where Israel, a leaked document where Israel already had a plan of what to do with all these, uh, uh, all the displaced people. They want to send them all uh, to Egypt and all the countries and, and the United States. Uh, Bibi Netanyahu was on a video saying how he could do whatever he wants 
in Gaza because Americans are gullible and he could do whatever on the on the home video. Basim, what what do you do you have an opinion on the knowledge, the pre-knowledge of this was going to happen and the fact that they got to wait, they got to do whatever they want for six hours with one of the sickest military, sickest intelligence? Do you think like they knew, they let it happen? What What's the, how do you feel about? I, I not, I'm no military expert, expert at all, but like watching this, the fact that they've been doing this for six hours and this is the most guarded border ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't even, you can't even have a dog pass by without being shot. And this, these walls has been tried and, and, and tested. And the fact that they get in and they continue, like, it, the, 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 the wall by itself is seven meters up, seven meters down the ground. It's one of the most fortified borders ever. And then you go in, the Apaches didn't even appear until after six hours. That's, that doesn't and, make and sense. And you understand, like, how Israel and Gaza and all of these, these are, like, very small. Mm -hmm. These are like very small. This is like a, a, a plane can be there in two minutes. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, these are the questions that uh, I, I don't want to go into conspiracy theories, but these are the questions that has the Israeli community has been asking. This kind of failure. A lot of people inside, again, conspiracy theories. I don't know. Why, I don't want to adopt any of them. It's like it's because of BB was having a lot of pressure from his Supreme Court, so he wanted something to kind of like divert it. And you know, when people want to divert something, like they make a conflict. Mm -hmm. But it kind of like it it it, it, it got out of hand. Mm -hmm. And the fact you can go in, lily willy, with very primitive uh, weapons and go in inside of Israel and come up. I mean, just a year ago, there were 50 Palestinians that were killed by snipers just because they came in closer to the, to the border and they were like holding flags. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they go in and you see like all of these military uh, bases empty for the taking and coming back with, with cars and with people and with hostages, I mean, if I'm an Israeli citizen, I would be pissed. Of course, I want answers. I, mean, I, so I, 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 I would, I would, I would, I would like to have some answers. So I, I don't know. But Basim, let's go to the last thing because for me, I'm curious with solutions, right? Some say, well, this is going to keep happening. It's never going to stop. It's been going on for hundreds of years, a couple thousand years. It's going to be ongoing for another couple thousand years. Perfect. Okay, fine. So that's one argument. Now, for the people that maybe are solution oriented and they, they want to figure out a way to, you know, improve things. You said 06, Hamas gets elected because, you know, uh, what it was. But today it wouldn't happen. Today, if they do have an election, who controls the election? Because you, you, were, uh, you were a little bit uh, not elusive. You were not clear about why they're not having fair elections today. Who controls the election? I wish Hamas is not in charge of. I wish the whole thing about the Islamization Judaism of this conflict is not there. Because that is making everything worse. So how do you get the rid whole of idea Hamas? about like putting so much religion on the Israeli side and on the Muslim side? It has actually, actually, it is the reason why this conflict is getting worse and worse and worse. It's because now people are like kind of like rooting for the divine, and whenever you put religion in any conflict, this is going to get worse and worse. So, the thing is, there is a problem, a fundamental problem between the, for the rights of the Palestinians in the land of, of Palestine. Now, whether you create a, 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 a Palestinian nation on the 22% after with uh, using, uh, like Jimmy Carter once said, it is, we would ha would have to have like a two-state two solution using Gaza, using the um, borders of 1967 with modification and land swap. That is like, and that is what the Palestinian Authority are actually accepting. Hamas does not accept that. And there's other people who does not accept that. And at the same time, people on the Israeli side does not accept that. You have people, radical people on both sides who want all or none and, be, and kind of fairly moderate people who want to stay in the middle and say, all right, let's have a little bit of a swap. But what is happening right now is a one state and the two state solution is being shot and dead a long time ago. Because even if Benjamin Netanyahu, when he came out and he bragged about how he have spoiled the Oslo Accord and how Americans don't care and we have manipulated them and 80% of America are with us so we can do whatever they want, the, the hell we want, even if we can kill as many Palestinians as possible. And he goes there on camera. When he does that and there's no repercussions, I don't think it's going to get uh, any better. And I think it's going to be a matter of time until those Palestinians will be, it's not, if it's not today, 
it's not this year, it's the year after, all of this Gaza will be cleared out and the Palestinians will be pushed into, into Sinai and Israel will take it over. And it will not stop like that because if you put 2.2 2 million people, put them in, in Sinai, that will be a security threat because those people will have an open access to the sea and they will have weapons and then they will want to avenge what happened to them and they will go in and attack Israel. And now it's going to have a dual problem between a group of people between Israel and Egypt and that will not get any better. So I'm, 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 I'm just like telling you I'm not very optimistic about what will happen because if you don't have justice and you don't have uh, people what they want, they are just like people who are going to get justice in themselves. And then they would be called militant terrorists, freedom fighters, no matter how you call them. But it's not going, going well. So w regarding Gaza, and I'm trying to come from a solution-based approach here, to be honest. At the end of the day, everything comes down to money or security. Do you need that? No. Everything comes down to, to money or security. So you just gotta pull your shirt up. Oh, uh, 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 hold on. Oh, what, what's going on? It's a heater pad. Let's put on your He's back. got a bad back. Let's up. let's get his back right before I ask this question. Mm. Hook up the shirt. That's how we played massages. We got a massa we got a masseuse coming in the house. <laughs> well, thank you guys because I'm really in a in a in in pain. I can't even. Well, you've been traveling for for <laughs> how many days? <laughs> I've, I've, we have what is called unreasonable hospitality. Yeah, Pat doesn't play. While we're game. having a friendly debate, we're going to make sure that your back's All right, so Okay, go ahead. Solution for Gaza. Yeah, well, go look, for it. Yeah. Israel wants security, and Gaza, many countries in the Middle East, need and want prosperity. Okay? Israel's whole thing, their whole contention is listen, we just can't have another October 7th, period. And we're going to do everything to protect our citizens. The people in Gaza, they're no different than other people in the Middle East. They want prosperity. The problem in the Middle East, in my opinion, my humble opinion, it's not just an Islamic issue. It's certainly not just an Israeli issue. Because, is, the, it, by the way, it is an Iranian issue. That's the tip of the spear when it comes to the uh, mafia-like regime that's running Iran over there. But it's socioeconomic. There's, people need economic improvements. People need political uh, certainty. And when you combine that with Islamic fundamentalism, you sprinkle in a little jihad, throw in a little anti-Zionism and rhetoric, you'll get what's going on in Gaza. But look at the countries that are thriving in the Middle East and look at the countries that are basically the Gazas of the Middle East. Unemployment rates. People need jobs, okay? If kids don't have jobs, if, you're, if youth unemployment is, is skyrocketing, what are these young people supposed to do? The highest unemployment rate in the Middle East, Jordan, 23%. Palestinians right next to them and also at 23%. Then you have Sudan, Libya, Tunisia, Lebanon, Iraq, Yemen, Afghanistan, Iran, Morocco, Syria, Turkey, Egypt, all above 10% unemployment with the exception of your country of, of Egypt, 7%. Every single one of those countries, political upheaval, especially what's going on in Iraq, Afghanistan, Palestine. But did you notice that all the good countries... High unemployment rate, low unemployment rates. Qatar, 0.3%, one of the richest countries on earth. They just had the World Cup there. Richest country in the Middle East. Bahrain, 1.9%. Israel, 3.3%. UAA, 3.4%. By the way, the UK's unemployment rate is 3.5%. 3 so UAE is better than the UK. Kuwait, 3.7%. Same as the US. When people don't have jobs, and they don't have purpose, and they don't have meaning, and they can't work, and they can't basically have political uh, econo economic sustenance for their family, they're going to resort to violence. That's why every single one of those countries that is 10% unemployment, those countries are, as Trump says, shithole countries. But all the nice countries, Qatar, UAE, they're all thriving. So it's not an Islamic problem. It's an economic problem. Now, if you want to talk GDP, just for my last point, the countries with the lowest GDP per person's those countries are disasters. Afghanistan. You know what the average person in Afghanistan makes a year? $350 a year. Afghanistan. Syria, $420. Yemen, $650. Sudan, $1,100. Morocco, $3,400. Palestinians, above any of those guys, $3,700 a year. Lebanon, $4,000. Egypt, $4,200. Conversely, every single rich country has zero problems. Qatar, GDP, $87,000. Better than the United States. Better than the United States. 
Israel, 55,000. UAE, 54,000. Kuwait, 40,000. I can go on and on and on here. The bottom line is this, what I've seen in the Middle East, it comes down to socioeconomics. Then you sprinkle in a little Islamism in there. Why is every rich country in the Middle East have no problems? But all the poor countries are suicide bombings, terrorists. Gaza had the opportunity to invest billions of dollars into infrastructure. In what? Into infrastructure, How? but they built tunnels and bombs. But my question is, no, no. I, I basically, here's no, my here, you're here, wrong. I'm, you're wrong. Gaza has not built tunnels and you're bombs. You're wrong. You're wrong. You said like as if you, they, as if there was like some sort of a, a prosperous source of economy, and all of us, I said, took that and put it on in tunnels. What you're missing here is Gaza since 2006 is under blockade, and even the medicine, even the water, even the electricity is controlled by Israel. They don't have... I'm open... not asking you about Gaza. I'm asking you about no, the I'm, Middle I'm, East, I'm, to be I'm, clear. I'm, no, you want to focus on Gaza, and then you want to turn you, it back you, on Israel. I'm asking you specifically... I'm sorry. Let's not why... talk about Israel, if that would make you a little I'm, bit I'm, nervous. This, that, Do you we can talk, talk about, about Israel for the next two hours. Do you want to talk about other countries in the, in the Arab world so we can prove that Arabs could be bombed at any time because we're fucking poor? No, I, that's not what I'm saying. You're, what that's I'm, exactly what you're saying. No, like they're just like poor people killing each other, and we're just like there watching them. No, I'm, I'm sorry, that dude. I like you, but seriously, your undertone is fucking racist from the beginning until the end. You are looking at those people as lesser people who have made bad choices, and because they are poor, they are okay to be fucking bombed by Israel. Okay, this your, is the third time uh, you've used the racist word. Your, I've never uh, said that your once under, about you. To, your undertone is very, very, very offensive for this. So people. when I read stats, yeah, yeah you, you don't like you're, my you're, tone you're, when. I read you, stats. Write your, you read the stats basically telling people like you see because they're rich they got this the, the, to themselves the, the rich people are better the poor people are okay so we can have to kill them no, every now and that's then that's not what I said and you're putting words in my mouth and it's actually super disrespectful I'm reading stats to you I'm saying how can we uplift the poor countries in the Middle East how can remove we turn remove the blockade that's number one no no no, no. I remove said the, the Middle East funny guy remove the blockade I said the Middle said... East you're talking about Gaza I'm naming all these countries that are thriving Qatar, Bahrain, UAE, mm. Israel, Silicon Valley of the Middle East. Mm. What can be done with the countries that are quote unquote shitholes? Okay, give me a country like a shithole. Give me an example. I'm looking at the unemployment rates in all like, these give countries. Me one, give me one country. Afghanistan. Okay. Syria. Afghanistan. Lebanon. Why, why Afghanistan got a, became a shithole country? Because they endorsed the Taliban. They, they did. The, they did. Yeah. Isn't that a little bit of a reductive way to tell history? Because at the beginning, there was no uh, uh, Taliban, and then the Soviet Union came in, and then America came in, supported the Taliban, made them bigger than they were, and then at the end of the day, they support. if you remember Rambo 3, Rambo mm -hmm. 3 was supporting the Taliban, so Taliban was really cool, and even they were they were even hailed by right-wing Christians as freedom fighters, anti-communists. And then what happened? America, some people like the Richard Wilson wall wanted him to come in to put some schools that no, 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 we spend, we spend all of this money of tanks on, on weapons. We don't need to put them schools. What happened? Taliban's flourished all because of America interfered, made it shitty, left everything. Taliban flourished it. And then America went in again, spent $2 billion, making it even two terrorist laws, made it even worse. So when you tell me like a country is not surviving, it's not because, oh, because there are bad people. No, no. You have to come into the root cause. Every single country that you said, I can bring you the root cause of how America and the West has fucked this country to become. Go to way. Syria, go to Lebanon, go yeah. to there. Yeah. Bashar al-Assad, yeah. killing his own people, gassing his own people. Tell me what that's who's American's his, uh, who, fault. Who, who's he supporting? Who was he supported by? That's the whole problem yeah. in the Middle East. Okay. You have Sunni, you have Shiite, you've got Houthi rebels, you got you got um every people, single the, country in the Middle East. It's a quagmire East, wrapped in a riddle Middle East. and then surrounded every, by Islamic terrorists. Every single Middle Figure East. Figure it out. It's, 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 Bashar Hussein is not a uh, is not you cannot really put Bashar Hussein as a Islamic terrorist thing, you know? Because no, because he, he's fighting ISIS, yeah, which we're funding ISIS to fight against who's Bashar fight, al who, Who's funding ISIS? You tell me. Qatar, who's actually funded, funded by the United States, all right? So, yeah, you, you don't understand. You no. see, this is how for complicated. Because I do understand how complicated people, it is. Pe people in the Middle East are either supported by Russia or supported by America, and they're fighting each other. So at the end of the day, you have people who have come to power because they have been supported by one of the superpowers, and they're fighting against each other. Yeah. You know, you have, you, you have the Hamiditi, and you have the, uh, the army in Sudan. Each one of them is supported by external powers. So it's not about, like, the Islamization of them. It's not bad. The economy is bad because at the end of the day, these are warlords who are fighting against each other. But to reduce that, in order, why can't they just like make some money while you, while you completely ignore 
the power of the international powers that are involved into that. Like, for example, the country like Mali. Mali is like very, very restless. And the reason Mali is restless is that Paris is there and it's putting up like some sort of a puppet uh, president so, Ma- so Paris can continue taking its share of gold and put it into, uh, in, uh, into its coffers. So there is, it's much more complicated than just selling Islamization or less Islamization. All of these power of play, you just gave me a Taliban and I give you the reason why America did that. Saddam Hussein, Saddam Hussein, right? Saddam Hussein, he was the baby of the of the United States administration. And then he went in and he invented Kuwait. Who gave him the money? Who gave him that kind of power? All right? It has been going on forever. The superpower are using the, 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 the smaller countries and they are controlling their own leaders in order to go fight each other because at the end of the day, it works for them. No, there's no, you're, I'm in full agreement with you that that's a mystery wrapped in a riddle, wrapped in a quagmire, what's going on in the Middle East. And I'm in full agreement with you that there are proxy wars all over the Middle East, no doubt. But the tip of the spear that's funding all the chaos, Pat has said that this is the year of chaos. The tip of the spear with the chaos is Iran. And there's no, I mean, who's funding Iran? China, Russia, they have a relationship. Azerbaijan, they have some sort of relationship. How do you deal with Iran? Because Iran's I mean, let's bomb greatest it. export... <laughs> let's bomb it. No, well, we haven't done it yet. No, no, let's bomb it. I, I, I don't I, think we should bomb I, I, it. I think we should. Okay. No, 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 let's well, bomb it. Then let's, let's I mean, elect you for a government I mean, official, I mean, you and you're no better than what's going I, I, I mean, on. You, you, you're you have no better than, what, than that, the ministers. That, that is the, so you're the Nikki Haley camp. That is the let's answer. go for it. That's the answer. Bomb Afghanistan, bomb Iraq, bomb Palestine, bomb Iran, and let's see what happens. I speak sarcasm how, how, better than the next no, no, guy. No, no, I trust you. I know you're being sarcastic. But what do you do about a regime that is funding Houthis, Hamas, Hezbollah? They are the ones who are sowing discord. I, I rem- what do you do about Iraq? I, rem- I remember like Colin Powell in the Security Council, like, let's bomb Iraq. And then they bombed Iraq. How is bombing Iraq had done to this country? It was a let's- fucking disaster. Oh, yeah, really? Yes. But it will not be a fucking disaster to bomb Iran, right? I'm agreeing with you. I know yeah. that you're speaking no, sarcasm to no, so people but that you aren't see, watching. You say like, oh, it's all about Iran. It's all, it starts like of this. Of course it is all because about like, Iran. Because 20, Who's funding the because, Houthis? Because, Who's funding Hezbollah? Who's 20, funding Hamas? Because 20 years Billions ago. Billions of dollars they're giving to terrorist because organizations. Because 20 years ago. And you just want to ignore ago, that? 10, 20 years ago, it was Iraq. And 20 years ago, it was I, Afghanistan. I, I, and they bombed them. I got a question you, for both of you. I got a question for both of you. I'm, I'm actually really curious and uh, 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 listen to both of you guys. This is my question. Okay. The part that both of you guys agree that we had a guy on a couple, the only guy, you know, one of the guys I've had on a couple of times, his name is John Perkins. He wrote a book called The Economic Hitman. I don't know if you've read yeah, the book. Know. You know who he is. Okay. And <clears throat> one of the things he talked about the model on what it was, they go to president and he, that's what he did, by the way. This was his job. Okay. Mm-hmm. He goes to a country that has a natural resource or location, oil, it's close to something that they can have some kind of control. And they go to them and they say, here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to come here and we're going to bring billions of dollars of infrastructure to your country. However, here's what you're going to give us. Pa, 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 pa. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the president who said no, he says a couple of them they killed. Oh, shit. That was his job. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And in, he doesn't say he killed them, but he says... If you said no, when I went back and I had to report back to the people that I work for that you're saying no to, guess what? Bad things are going to happen to you and your family. And it happened. Mm -hmm. Then the next model was we come, we bring infrastructure. Then we make the country go bankrupt. Then you give us everything. Then we control you. Are we naive enough to believe? That's what China is doing now. Exactly. But but pre-China... And we did that. America did that. And for others have done that. And Russia has done that. Other people. And UK is UK tried to do that to Iran. And then later on, eventually, UK, US, you know, Germany, France, these guys got rid of the Shah because, you know, uh, you know, coup and all. The people have been involved with economic hitman for a long time. Here's a question for you, Basim. Here's a question for you, Adam. Okay. So we both agree that that's going on. Okay. We both agree that that's been going on for many decades. No one can even dispute it nowadays. But now we're in this shithole. And what I mean by shithole, shit show, shit show. is insanity everywhere. Bassem, what do you do now? Is it more from the standpoint where a part of you was almost not optimistic? You're like, Pat, I don't even, I, I think this thing's going to go and nothing's going to happen. It's going to continue all this other stuff, right? What do we do now? We were told uh, uh, during uh, uh, 2015, 2016, when it was a debate between what Hillary Clinton and Trump, yeah, mm-hmm. 
And what were we told? If Trump becomes a president, a uh, war is going to happen. War this three. is what's going to happen. So everybody, we're all like, oh, shit, it's going to be pretty bad. This guy's going to have a, do you really want this guy to have the finger on the button? Okay. He goes in. ISIS disappears. There's no war. It's quiet, low key. Everything's good. Boom, boom, boom. And then, no, I was just good. And then, boom. Biden gets elected. He's going to be peace. He's going to bring everybody together. He's going to bring this. He's going to. Then he comes in, and then, you know, Afghanistan happens within months. Mm -hmm. Eighty-three billion dollars equipment being left. Then he got Ukraine, Russia, and then he got this. And then there's a bunch of guys, economists, that are talking about, you know, this is China's year to try to invade Taiwan because Taiwan's got an election coming up. It's a shit show, basically, is what you're but, saying. Yeah, no, so, but, but the but the point is, like, there's so many contradictions in politics as well. At a point like this, Basim, where, you know, mainstream media is not going to tell us the real story because they're maybe not even getting the real story themselves on what's happening behind closed doors. What do you do today? There is one of the most advanced military armies in the region, in the world, supported by the West, supported by America, have vote open, uh, voting, like, they're diverting their vote all over, and they're killing people for all that time, and nobody is doing anything for Who are you Israel. talking about? I'm talking about Israel. Okay. All right? So the killing has to stop. And I'm not talking about Gaza. I'm talking about what they do in the West Bank. Every single day in the West Bank, that all of these people are being killed in the West Bank. And there's no Hamas came out from West Bank to do the, 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 the 7th of October, all right? Just a couple of days ago, like a woman was walking with her children, stop, pop, 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 snap, walking the street. That is the regular days of people in the West Bank. Do you think the problem is Gaza? What you see in Gaza is an accelerated, exaggerated form of what's happening in the West Bank too. So you have a country that has occupied the land and they are like give, making people living like animals. And if you deal people with like animals, they will come up as animals, all right? That is the crux of all. We can talk about politics and about economy. It's here till the kingdom comes. What is happening is there is, is horrible injustice happening every single day. They're taking people, strip them up, saying them that they're Hamas. They're, they are like, they, you, have like, you have like an 11 person being killed every hour. You have 247 person being killed every day. That is in five days, that is 1,400 people that were killed on this October 7th. You have 30,000 people. And the thing is, when you say 20,000, 30,000, numbers don't care, it don't mean anything anymore. If I told you a million people died in Gaza, you will not flinch because their numbers have become so... It's evil. true. It's, it's no, nobody... I don't, I don't disagree. Nobody. And so we go into these circle emotions. How can we stop that again? How is that? No, there is killing happening every day. My wife's family have actually cheated death so far for 100 days because they've been running from Khan Yunus to Rafah, back to Khan Yunus, and they were told in the beginning that Khan Yunus and Rafah are the safe place because it's in the house. And then they were telling them, these are the safe path, yeah. take these three safe paths, these are the buses, they will run into the buses and Israel will bomb the buses. After being guaranteed that this is a safe path, this is murder every day. So I don't know all of these circular words about like river to the sea, what's happening. To, that doesn't make any sense while people are being killed every single day. We have a tragedy, a, a, a genocide, a holocaust happening in Gaza and everybody is just like, just like playing their balls. It's like, what do you think about the economy? What do you think about Iran? What do you think about Iran? That's bullshit. There's killing right ha happening right now, and we're just like watching it and trying to fill time with useless uh, conversation. But how do you fix it short term, though? Because short term. Make Israel stop. There is no. How do you do no, that? Okay, how exactly. Do you do that? <laughs> America has to t tell Israel stop because basically Israel is a client state. It's taking all of its money in the States. It has actually sucked America dry with all of the money that it's taking away from him, and yet it's not doing anything. So why do you think Biden administration is not telling them to stop? Because they are fucking cowards. Because it seems that every four years, every American president go and kiss the, uh, the hand and bend the knees and go to APAC to make them sure that Israel is much more important in their foreign policy than America itself. And the only one who did not do it was Bernie Sanders, the only Jewish American candidate who, who refuses to go to APAC. And you cannot call that anti-Semitic. Right? And you have to be very, very careful about being anti-Semitic or anti-Jew. Because if you call me anti-Semitic, I'm just like, I'm going to fuck you, man. I'm not. Like, my, my idol is John Stewart. Bernie Sanders, I voted for him for presidency. Is it this whole thing about, like, using anti-Semitic and Islamophobe and everything to kind of, and transphobe to shut down the conversation? It's bullshit. You have a murderous country who have lied to the international community, who have actually... Uh, uh, neutered its own Ethiopian women because they didn't want black people to reproduce, who kidnapped Yemenis Jewish people from their parents, who have 
like countless atrocities who have even have zoning zoning laws like Jim Crow, Jim Crow. It's like, what are this? This is like a racist country that is supported by the United States and it's killing. And you know, it's fine. There's a lot of racist country, horrible people. But they have, I've never seen a country killing 30,000 people within 100 days. This is 10 times the number of Ukrainians being killed in Russia in two years. It does not make any sense. And about nuclear weapons, yes, they have calculated it. Right now, they've calculated the number of, of weapons that have by the TNT. They have run like three uh, three. Uh, three nuclear weapons in a very, very small part. So it's really about the killing. Stop the killing, and then we can talk. Yeah, but that's, that's okay, so... So that's, that's, that's like, now let's not stop the killing. Let's talk more about no, certain, no, what I'm um, no, certain what I'm, stuff that doesn't make any sense. What, what, I'm, saying, what, what I'm saying is, why, no, I'm asking the question to say, we're, we're so into deep that, that the amount of parties involved is not as simple as stop the killing because... You, you, you know, the only way this works, and I'm, you know, I know you're a diehard President Trump fan. I know you're a big fan of his, and, you know, you, you, you campaigned for him and all that stuff. I've heard you getting up there. You open up for him all the time, which is beautiful. Oh, I to love see. The, Oh, yeah. Trump. He is my so, favorite. So, so let me ask you this. Let me, let, me, let me ask you this. Why do you think, you know, sometimes you, you sit there and you say, man, I can't stand that person. That person is da 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 and then, you know, shit, maybe am I wrong myself? Maybe that guy's not as bad as I think that guy's. Fuck, he, there's no way in the world I can say anything good about him. No way. If I do, God forbid if I do, right? Okay. Do you think, like, every family, you know, has that one tough guy in the family. And when that person is alive, nobody does anything stupid. Do you know what I'm talking Every family has it. You have it. I have it. We all have it, right? It's an uncle, it's a grandfather, it's a father, it's somebody. Is the right? bully? He's not the bully. It's not the bully. It's the guy that doesn't allow the bully to bully. That guy. Okay. It's the guy that the does... The protector, even. Yeah, it's like the protector. It's kind of like you don't want to wake that guy up. Like, you know that one scene from Christopher Walken in a movie says, you know, every once in a while, the lion is sitting there, and they come and pull him, and they do this, and they do that. The hyenas are biting Every his once in a while, the lion has to wake up and tell everybody. He says everybody knows what the lion is capable of, Yes. right? This is why people put on their house sign that says what? There is a Prefer vicious a dog, dog yeah. you know, in the back. Or this house believes in the Second Amendment. Whether they have a gun or not, the person that's trying to rob the house is going to say what? I, would, I don't want to go and rob a house that may have a gun in there, right? Mm -hmm. So that sign avoids conflict yes why do you think Basim? i i'm so curious you know what kind of an answer you're going to give to this why do you think during trump there was no war no conflict and we were expecting to see world war three under him why do you think i have no idea uh and i think because maybe trump as much as i don't like him he was kind of business oriented he said like oh, i'm not gonna how much will that uh, war cost me no <laughs> i'm not gonna do that um, so maybe that's the one thing. And that's kind of guess, something to be good on his, his behalf, although I'm not a big fan. Uh, I have a problem with other policies. But, uh, yeah, I don't think, yeah, maybe that's the only thing. That but, 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 Boston, what let about... Me, let me but, stay on this. Go, 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 I was going to ask a question, too. Because, okay, I, uh, 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 on, the, on the spending side, it's going to cost us money. <laughs> He's a business. <laughs> that's an interesting perspective. Yeah. But, okay, how about how about this one? How about the fact that... You know, he says, hey, you have a button, I have a bigger button. Mm. Hey, you do this, I know exactly where you are right now and I can destroy you. I would much rather not. How about the fact that he put the fear in people that wanted to bully and take advantage of other people so nobody did during his time? Maybe, but you also have to remember that COVID came in right in the middle. That was of three years later. That was three No, years. that was actually... The, two and a half and, years later. Yeah, but, but you know... The first two and a half, or still, if the COVID came, you know, that's even a bigger opportunity. I, but I have no clear answer. I couldn't, I'm the only, the only thing is like, oh, this is going to cost us money. I don't want to spend money. But, 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 you, but you know what, though? You're a smart guy and a reasonable guy because for me, like if I, if I were to sit there and say... You know, uh, uh, what did Clinton do? You know, I voted for Clinton. The freaking last time we had a balanced budget, him and Newt Gingrich worked together, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, what did Reagan do? Reagan and Tip O'Neill would go have beer together afterwards. There's two Irish men that would fight throughout the day, but at 6 o'clock they're at the bar sitting there having a drink together, right? You don't have to like the enemy 
or somebody that maybe policy-wise you disagree with. You may say, I don't agree with them on pro-life, pro-choice. I don't agree with them on blah, blah, blah. I don't agree with them on this. But holy moly, the temperature was super low during Trump than we have today. Everybody uh, that was talking about Biden's a sweet man, he's a unifier, he's this, he's that. Dude, we got like, it's almost a World War III categorically, we can't say it, but there's a world going on right now. Because he's supporting Israel. But so did Trump, though. Yeah, but Israel didn't do that act during Trump. And you know what uh, Trump said about Netanyahu? Mm. Did you hear what Trump said about Netanyahu? Right. Can you pull up a clip about what Trump said about Netanyahu where Trump said, after what happened with Ghassam Soleimani, okay, you remember when he took out Ghassam Soleimani, who was supposed to be like the next leader, he was the number two guy in Iran. Um, he criticized Netanyahu and said he almost didn't trust him because when Netanyahu said he was going to be in it with him, he didn't. Mm. So, so the part about Trump is he doesn't have a problem. Critic Wait, you criticized Netanyahu? Your daughter's married to Kushner. What are you doing criticizing Netanyahu? I don't Net know if that would be the same if it was like more of a massive uh, like military operation that's Maybe happening. Maybe because right it now. wouldn't happen under because, because like when you kill someone, yeah. a kind of like repercussion kind of like die very quickly. But this is like an ongoing for more than three months. So I don't know if what, how would Trump would they react. Are you a sports guy? Yeah. What do you like? What sport? Basketball. Do you, you like basketball? Yeah. You know what they say, you know, like uh, 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 sometimes like these teams like, you know, Baltimore Ravens or some of the teams like even back in the days, I don't know if you're a Detroit Pistons guy or if you're an old school basketball guy or not. A lot of the guys won because their defense was sick, yeah. right? They just had a sick defense. Well, you wouldn't come through the middle or they just were freaking hovering all over. It was so annoying. Yeah, like, right? the, the, like the Jordan Rules and Pistons. That's right. The yeah. Jordan Rules Pistons, right? So, you know, sometimes, you know, the, the best way to prevent a war is to have the fear you impose on everybody else where you, you know, defense where it's like, you know what? We're just not even going to get there. I don't even want to do anything under this guy. Do you think at this point, like, for example, case studies, you've been here since 2014, right? November 11, 2014. So do you think 10 years, you've been here 10 years. I came here November 28, 1990, okay? And you come here like, okay, uh, a senior, Bush senior. All right, uh, Clinton, huh, interesting. Okay, boom, junior, GW, interesting. Okay, Obama, huh, there's a Trump, huh. So now you got so many case studies, and then in life, you sit there and you say, socially, these are the issues that matter to me the most, right? You know, if you and I were to start a country together, if you and I started a country together, and we got 10 million people, okay, and we have an opportunity to attract another 10 million people to our country, what do you think the mothers and the fathers' number one priority is to come to a new country? Do you think it's social security? No. Do you think it's Medicare? No. Do you think it, what do you think is number one? I would say the S word, right? Security and safety, let's just say, okay? A woman wants to feel safe around a man. A woman wants to feel secure around a man, right? If the number one word is the S word, especially the last three years, do you think a lot of people in the last three years are sitting there reprioritizing their top reason to elect the president, somebody that's gonna lower the temperature to not have war? Do you think America's kind of there today after all the mess we've seen the last three years? I still have hope in America. I still, I still like, like this country this month. I consider this as my own country. I find it like I found a second chance when I left the Middle East. I think America is, is actually a great country. It has a lot of potential, and it has given a lot of people, including me, a second chance. So I, I believe in the idea of America. And the fact that I criticize America, I criticize it like, well, like we do. We criticize it out of love in order totally, to be better. Of course. And... Um, what I'm worried about is like over the years, America might have lost that kind of lure because it has been dragged more and more by the military industry complex. And the money has been prioritized in order to spend money on war, spend money on the military. I agree. And I think it's, I mean, 68% of your budget is taken to the military. And that's not a lot of, that's, that's huge. And many of these military contracts has been um, exaggerated. And 60 minutes just shows some, like, something that used to cost $30 now cost three thousand dollars and there's no catch there's, there's there's no curb of these prices because they are the one who are making up That's the prices right. so yes the security is great and all but security in itself because north korea has security right it's not about the security this is education and there is and there and uh, and the equality and people let me answer this hang on one second Chris, come on. 
Mr. Cuomo, we're on a podcast. Why are you oh, calling us? Man? We're in the middle of a podcast. Name, name dropping. Yeah, I mean. Chris. What are you talking about? I'm doing a live podcast with this, uh, with this legendary uh, <laughs> comedian, Basim Yosef, and we're having a very friendly conversation about, you know, how his, honestly, I'm a little confused because he's here campaigning on behalf of Trump, and <laughs> we're listening to him, and I'm, I'm not convinced. I'm, I'm just not convinced. Why does he not have a, a red hat on? <laughs> no, he has the shirt on. He's and not wearing shoes, a hat. He has today. MAGA so shoes on. He's got MAGA shoes on and MAGA shirt on. No, but Chris, I'm going to call you afterwards. We're on the live podcast. Uh, uh, I'll call you right after this. Do your thing. My man, yeah. bye. Hold on, my phone. So, but go, <laughs> going, on, back, but going back to it. But going back Elon. to it. Going back got, to it. I got you. John Stewart on the line. Right <laughs> You're John? so funny. But, yeah, I'm here with Bassem. We're, <laughs> oh, we're best hold friends. On, hold on, Elon. Okay. Elon? Yeah, no, I, but 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 what, the the reason why I'm asking this question is because, you know, when you're you're young, your dad's kicking your ass, challenging you all this stuff. You know, you know what? Look at Joey's dad. They smoke weed together. I wish my dad would smoke weed with me. Look at Bobby's dad. They have drinks together. I wish my dad. Look at us. I wish someone. And later on, you're like, dude, I am so freaking glad. That guy was tough on me. Thank you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for this. So for me, I'm sitting there, you know, thinking like a lot of people are sitting around saying, well, look, what, what is the most important, you know, issue for us to sit there and resolve? I think the last three years, people are sitting there saying, look, man, we already went through COVID. That was nasty. It divided America. I think COVID... At least 9-11, we went like this. I think COVID, we went like this. I think maybe you agree with that. We went way like this. You're Team Vax? You're Team Vax? You're this? I'm Team... You do Team... No, no way. Hey, so you Team... Don't, 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 mask shut down. Don't, don't. It was all like, like so divided, right? I think Americans are tired. They're tired of the fights with the family and the relatives and we have to hate each other and all this other stuff. We can disagree on four different policies. But guess what, man? I think America is the greatest country in the world. Still, I think it's the greatest country in the world. Does it have a history of some of the stuff they've done with economic hitman? Yeah, it's, it's documented. Did Eisenhower tell us be careful with this military industrial complex? Of course. Do you know how many military contractors we had? Not contractors, where they sold products and supplies, military uh, uh, product like, like General Dynamics and Boeing and all these companies. You know how many of these we had 40 years ago? 50 plus companies. You know how many it is today? Five. Huh. The five bought the other 45. Wow. So there used to be so much competition. Now it's come like this. It's a monopoly. It, it's becoming almost a form of a nationalization because politicians are getting so much check from them. The lobbying amount of money they're spending. So they're like, hey, man, we'll start a war. Of course, yeah, we should kill yeah. and bomb Iran. Nikki Haley. She sat on the board of Boeing, and so, no wonder you want another war because these people want another war because they're going to get another contract. That promise was made by Eisenhower as a Republican president that said, be careful with this, where these guys are going to want to go to war. All I'm saying is, I think what this election has done, this last three years, I think whether you're left, right, center, I think the most popular thought on every woman, man, father, husband, um, you know, mother, wife is, guys, I just want to be safe. Mm -hmm. I, I just want us to be safe. And I think that's at the top of the mind of a lot of people. And I am so, I'm like, I'm so curious as a businessman who likes case studies to see how America is going to react to Afghanistan, Ukraine, Russia, Israel, Palestine, potentially China, Taiwan. I am so curious to know how they're going to react to the election this year. So curious. It's going to be, be wild. Because, because I think that's at the top of their mind. Mm -hmm. I think that's at the top of their mind. Basim, what do you think? Well, I, uh, I want to get it back a little bit because since we were talking about Palestine and Israel, I think the, the, the most dangerous thing when you talk about this is you're either called a terrorist or anti-Semitic or whatever, right? And people, I, I would see the people who are the very pro-Israel, who, who really supported Israel, and 7th of October, many of them are actually anti-Semitic, especially right-wing politicians, Matt Gates and uh, MTJ and all of those people. Those people, they love Israel, but they hate the Jews. They are anti-Semite. It is very obvious. And this is why you see this dichotomy about how 
uh, the Jewish uh, Voices for Peace. These are Jewish people in New York. They come in and they take over the central station and they're all Jewish and they say, not in my name. The whole idea is conflating Israel and with Judaism is wrong. And I think the most dangerous thing that can happen to the Jewish people of the world is to have Israel as their representative because a lot of Jewish people don't like them to be their representatives. As many as many Muslims don't like some of those Islamic regimes representing them. This whole idea about making it's all or none, no. Israel have actually done a lot of criminal activities that a lot of Jews do not agree upon. And a lot of the people who go out in New York, in Brooklyn, in Los Angeles, these are Jewish people shouting, not in my name. Many of those people are actually um, Holocaust survivors, like Gabor, who was like a very famous Holocaust survivor himself, and he say Israel is a Zionist, terrorist, apartheid country. So if you think like I'm saying this because of my Muslim or Arab background, listen to the other Jews. They're saying that Israel is the criminal here and has been supported time and time and time again by the EU, by American, uh, by American administration. I'm not asking for anything that is out of the box. I'm asking them to stop the killing. Because let's say 7th of October, worst day ever, okay. How many people are you going to continue to kill in order to get your revenge? Because it seems that you will not be able to eradicate Habas. As a matter of fact, you can kill 100,000 people today. What you have created is 100,000 Hamas killers. No, this has never... It, 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 Israel tried it before 2004 and it failed. 2006 and failed. 2009 and failed. 2012, 2014 and every time Israel came in and they killed many people as possible and they came back. The solution for this is not more killing, more war. I know people like, like war solves everything. You will not be able to solve everything with war. The whole idea about this is to justice. If there's land to be given back, give back the land. If there is agreement to be done, do the agreement and sit together because believe me, whatever cost you think is too high giving up the land, it will not come close to the cost of human life that we are losing every life, whether on the Jewish side or the, or the Muslim side or the Israeli side or the Arab side. So how do you get rid of Hamas? Get rid of the reasons that created Hamas. Which is what? The horrible living conditions, the, uh, the blockade, putting people in prison, not allowing people to get their own destiny. If you do that in any more, you, listen, Israel could have found, been founded in Uganda, which by the way, the British government gave the Jews 8,000 acres and then they said no, to 1903. If Israel wants to go to Uganda, you can have a, an Uganda Hamas. If you make people and put them in the lands of other people, there are already 2 million people that are already there and then you just push them around, you will have resistance. Right? And the thing is, Hamas wasn't there since 1984. Hamas was created in 1987. Until 1987, Israel killed 100,000 Palestinians since 1948. It's not about the PLO, because Israel took, uh, took Israel in 1948. The PLO was created in 1964. These are all a result of what Israel has been doing. Why do you mention Uganda? Because the British proposed that the Jews should move to yeah. Africa and Uganda. Pull up yeah. Uganda on a map, just so we're clear. What, what does that have to do with anything? What I'm saying is, is before... The, uh, the Israeli were pulled, were the Jews were transported to Palestine. You know, the, right right after that whole you know World War Two Holocaust genocide thing. That no, no, no. Before, for, before, before. Yeah, yeah. Before during that time. No, no, no. Before, yeah. before. Okay. I'm I'm talking about 1882. Mm -hmm. When the Zionist movement started. Exactly, 1882. Gotcha. At that time, there were only three percent of Jews living in Palestine. Mm -hmm. And they were like different. They were like, they said Argentina, they said Chile, Madagascar, South Africa, and Uganda. In 1903, uh, the British government offered the, the Jewish people about 80 acre, 80,000 acres in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said no. And the reason that they said no, so there's what you don't know, there was like a big, con this is very interesting, there was a big conflict between the rabbis and the secular uh, Jewish movement. So the rabbis said, like, we cannot, go. the rabbis were the one who actually uh, the, the objected, said, like, we cannot go to Palestine. It's like, what do you know, what do you mean? It's the promised land. It's like, yes, it's the promised land when the real Jesus comes. So the secular said, well, maybe we should go to Palestine and that will invite real Jesus to come. <laughs> it was like a whole, by the way, this is all in Tudor Herzl, Herzl uh, uh, memoirs. You can read about that. And even 1903, 
Tudor Herzl, in page 96, in the pamphlet for the Jewish state, he said, maybe the Jewish people should just get what they can. So what I'm saying is these were discussions at the end of the 19th century and the 20th century. And then the, there's like a, the movement that wanted to put the uh, uh, Palestinian, uh, sorry, the Jewish people in, in Israel actually won. And it happened very, 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 very slowly. By 1914, there were about 7% of Jewish people in Palestine. Now, when the Bill 4 declaration happened, when the Bill 4 declaration happened, the only one who pr uh, rejected the Bill 4 declaration of like, putting Jews in Palestine was a Jewish British businessman in the parliament that said, like, those people are British people and we should not put them into another place. I'm not giving you, I'm just giving you the historical. You're giving us the history. I appreciate it. Yeah, I get yeah, it. But I, I, I doubt the Jews were like, yo, Uganda, let's do it. <laughs> no, they wanted Israel. But what no, do you no, do, they, they, what, what they, do, you no, do no, at I'm this so, point? I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, I will have, I'll, have, I'll, have to, I'll have to disagree with you, sir, because you have to understand many of those Jews, they came from pogroms mm -hmm. from Ukraine and from Russia. Yeah. And then when they went to London, they were really treated bad and they were called the problem the problem, mm -hmm. we need the solution, we need the solution. And this is why when Hitler came to power, he said, we need the final the solution. Final, of course. So you understand all of these um, problems happened between the Jews coming from Eastern Europe yeah. when they went to England and Western Europe. So basically the, busy, uh, the, uh, the British people didn't like them and they want to push them out. So the we, the all, by the way, I mean, we can joke about that, but mm -hmm. seriously, the whole thing about Madagascar, South Africa, Chile and Argentina and Uganda, these were real discussions with real budgets. I'm, I'm very familiar with the Zionist and, and, movement. And, and, I get and, it. And then at a certain time, so 1914, 7%, uh, and then the Belfort Declaration, and then the First World War, nothing happened. Second World War with the Nazis were like maybe kicking and killing everybody. Yeah. And then they started to go in mass in Palestine. But are you sensing a common theme here? They go to a country, they have success, let's kill them. They go to a country, let's they have success, let's kill them. They started in Egypt, they went to Spain, they went to Morocco. No, no, no. They went to Europe, no, no, they went to no, Poland no, 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 and Russia. This, Can this, I speak? Can this, I speak? This, this, your question. this is not accurate. This of is course this is accurate. Sir, this is not accurate. What's sir. not accurate of what I just said? But the whole reason that I say that is that they've been running around the entire world. Sir. It's called the Jewish diaspora. The I'm speaking. Only... I'll let you speak. You could speak for a half hour. I'm asking you a two-minute question. The... There's a Jewish diaspora. They're running all over the world. It culminates in the Bolshevik Revolution. Zionism, it starts Theodor Herzl. It ends in the final solution in Germany. The Jewish people said, listen, we just need a state. You look at the map of the Middle East. It's as big as this room. We have a little tiny microphone. And then we're fighting over the size of this microphone when you have the entire room right here. So tell me, what should Israel do now? Does Israel have a right to exist and defend itself or so, no? So can I answer? I'd answer. Yeah, go ahead. So first of all, th certain things that you said in, in that monologue was a little bit inaccurate. Yes, they were treated badly in Europe. They were treated badly everywhere. And they were not treated badly in in Spain because that was under the, the Arab rules. Yeah, As of a matter, course, they were. They, what yeah. do you mean? It was called the Spanish Inquisition. Yeah, Look that, it up. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, sir, sir. The Spanish Inquisition was done by the Christians against Muslims and Jews together. Okay. Muslims and Jews were sitting But together. it happened is what I'm saying. What I'm saying is before the Spanish Inquisition, Jews lived in the courts as minister and as poets and as scientists under the Arab rule in Andalusia. Yeah. When the Spanish Inquisition came in, they killed both Jews and both Muslims. Mm -hmm. so, well, but, the but, Crusades, we all know how that story goes between Christians and Muslims for decades and you centuries. Under, and you understand that the first crusade did not kill a single Muslim? Okay, but the third and the fourth and the fifth one did. Wh where, what, what happened with the first crusade? Enlighten me. What, tell the me. first crusade came out from England and they killed 2,000 Jews in Europe. They didn't even make it to Jerusalem. This is how bad the Jews were treated by the Christian Europeans. And as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. the Euro the Jews did not find refuge unless they found it in the Arab countries. I'm not saying that they were perfect, but if you compared mm -hmm. what the Jews were enduring in Ukraine and Russia 
and in Western Europe and how they lived in Baghdad and Egypt yeah. and Morocco, they were a much better. But this thing. validates the whole point of why the Jews need Israel, because every Dude, country they go to, okay, let, let, they're going to be run out of town or let killed. Me, let, let, at the very least, they have their me, own country so they could say, at least we have safety here. Let, every country, every story that you just mentioned, Basif, okay. is them being killed by somebody, whether it's the yes, Christians, I, whether it's the Brits, listen, whether it's the uh, am, Ukrainians, whether really, it's the Russians. The whole point of Israel is like, we can no longer just just rely on other people's niceties and empathy to not be murdered. Okay. So now we need a state of our okay. own. Let, let me you understand let that? Me, I understand. Let me continue. Yes so, or no? So all through these years, they were living peacefully, relatively under the Arab rule. And then what happened, the pogroms in Russia mm -hmm. and in Ukraine pushed them to England. Then England said, we cannot take them anymore, push them more to the Arabs. At the time, at the time... Jewish people in the Arab world, especially Egypt, were living... I mean, the first people who actually did the cinema and the theater were Jewish Egyptian people who lived there all their lives. Mm -hmm. Jews, Christians, and Muslims were living... Right now, the department store, like our version of Macy's and Target, they all have Jewish names because they have part of the fabric of the Egyptian society for decades, way before the Jews from Europe came. Mm -hmm. Now, when the Jews from the Europe came, there's two ways to come. You can come easily or you can come by force. They started to come with all of these shapes, uh, ships and then you have the Haganah and you have all of the Zionist um, uh, um, um, gangs who started to come into uh, Palestine and they started to, they were like 1.5 million Palestinians that you cannot erase. So the fact that they, this is the Arab world, you can go anywhere. No, because this is their country. So they went in, they replaced them and then we had the 1948 and the rest is history. Now, having said that, do I want Israel to be erased and I want people to go back to Europe? I will never use that kind of, uh, of argument unless that you tell me, well, why don't the Palestinians go to Arab countries? If you don't use that, I'm not going to use that. I believe that Israel is a, is a matter of fact. And I think it's too late to come and erase or uh, get, get people out, whatever. What we have to do is either a one-state solution that everybody, Palestinian and Israeli, have exactly the same equal right, and all of them have the same passport, and they live in peace. And the other reason is a two-state solution. Obviously, so far, Netanyahu and other Israeli uh, officials have said many, 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 many times there will never be a Palestinian state, not in the West Bank, not in Gaza, ever. And these are official uh, statements by them. Mm. So they have already said that. You, you, sometimes people accuse Arabs, but we do not want the state of Israel. They say we don't want a state for Palestine. So you have this. As long as you think that this is your land only and those Palestinians are indispensable and they can go other places, you will never have peace. They've had the Oslo records. They've had the Abraham records. At what point does Israel say, I can't negotiate with these people? Hamas is charting... A founding charter says we call for the destruction of Israel. In order to make peace or to make a deal, you need to have someone on the other side that is willing to at least come to the table. The closest that had come was Yasser Arafat, the PLO, under Clinton, 1998. He came back. He, they, they gave him 98% of what he wanted. He came back. They said no. Would Israel or – listen, Israel's just like America. It's a democracy. In a democracy, you have a free exchange of – Ideas. The Marjorie Taylor Greens that you mentioned are wildly different from the AOCs, it, but policy is different from rhetoric. The policy of the PLO, of Hamas, of Fatah is essentially destroy Israel. There's no, no two state no, solution. No, no. The, the rhetoric. You, uh, Hamas yes. is different from Fatah. Fatah is different from the authority because there's nothing in the charter of, of Fatah. Or the, or the, uh, but the, the, the point that, that I'm getting at is all no, these but, political but, factions, no one wants come to come to the table, do a deal. And, and, and here's what's and happening. Neither do the, the Israel. The, the, but, okay, okay, because can, they're getting worse no, no, and worse. No, no, worse. They I, gave I, them 98% of what they want. Sir, have you seen they the had a good decade? hand a few de sir, decades sir, ago. Sir, now have they have seen, no hand. Has, sir, have, you have no leverage now. See, That's the problem. Sir, have you seen the video by Netanyahu who's bragging about spoiling the, uh, the Oslo Accord on his own? I've seen the video. Yeah, yeah. He said, like, like I'm going to destroy it. We're going to hit them. Nobody's going to do that anyway. This is the guy. And by the way, just a little bit of thing. The Oslo Accord, you know, it was signed by Yasser Arafat from one side mm -hmm. and from Isaac Rabin from the other yes, side. What course. happened to Isaac Rabin? He got assassinated by, by a whom? Jew. By a Jew. Okay. And by, by, by a far right radical Jew. Because he was who, a moderate. Who, who, 
who who uh, who was a part of what part? That's, that's Jew. Question. That's Jew. What kind of organization was he part of? He was on the far right party. Where it where is the same Netanyahu organization where Ben Gafir, the head of the national security now, is a minister mm-hmm. under Netanyahu. Yeah, newsflash. So, every country that's so democracy I, has a left wing and a right wing. I, but I don't think every country has at least two terrorist people as ministers because Ben Gafir was arrested on the account of killing Ishaq Rabin. As a matter of fact, there's a very famous video for him where he got the emblem of his car Two months before Isaac Rabin's like, we've got your car. Next, we got you. Two months later, Isaac Rabin. This is the kind of government that you are defending. It is a terrorist government that kills its own people. Even Bid Zalim, who is the minister of finance, he was arrested because he was he was going there by 600 liters of gasoline to blow up an Israeli highway. This is the kind of criminals who kill people Gaza everywhere. And I, I find it very difficult like, to find somebody actually like to defend so their actions. So are you saying that Israel is the only country in the Middle East that has a thug-like regime? Oh, no, not at all. But Okay, uh, so this is pretty common for that neighborhood. But yeah. you know what's the difference? Yeah. I don't see any other country in the, in the regime saying I'm a democratic, secular country and I have Western values. Well, according to the World Index, uh, World Economic Index, Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. This is in our opinion. Exactly. Look it's it the up. only de- democracy exactly. with, 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 which would have terrorist the, people the, in this the, government, which I is, th- I find it very interesting. Here's the problem that I'm having with you. Is you that I actually problem with me? No, with your argument. With me? Well, you've already called I'm me a, racist. I'm, if you I'm a very nice person. I think you are a nice person. I'm very nice. I think you're nice. Oh, I, nice I never called you racist. I, I called your argument multiple, racist. Multiple, multiple times, but it's all good. He said undertone. He didn't call. I said, I said it's a racist undertone. Thank Brother, you so much. I was it's a racist it. undertone. Thank you, Basim. If you look at the chat, you've probably been the nicest to me today. So we're cool. <laughs> so the problem that I have with you is that either you're. Um, anti-Israel, or you're just intellectually lazy. Hear me out. Every problem... That's a very nice insult. Yeah. Thank you Aww. very much. Every, he's, he's every, insulting yeah. me very softly. I am. I am. I am. Because I believe in having discussion and being forthright, rather than when you leave, I'll be like, fuck that guy. I actually think you're a smart guy. I actually think you know your stuff. You're just so fixated that Israel's the problem. The problem in the Middle East, like I said, follow the money. The countries that are succeeding... The Qataris, even the Saudis these days, they're coming into the modern world. They're leaving the the sixth century mentality behind and say, let's get into the 21st century. Where where they need to succeed, in whether it's Gaza or whether it's Lebanon or whether it's Syria and whether Afghanistan, they need to focus on GDP, not GDT. Gross domestic product, not gross domestic terrorism. And the problem is they're obsessed. Put the guns down. Put the Quran down. Actually start living by the words that the Quran says, not some false uh, equivalent of what they think is actually going on there. You talk about the genocide in Israel or in Gaza as if it's just a matter of fact. Well, let me, let me, let me show some stats for you because after you see these stats, Israel's the worst genociders ever. The numbers, the, according to the world data, if you trust data, between 1990 and 2022, the Palestinian population overall went from 2 million to 5 million, okay? Pretty bad at genocide if that's what's happening right there. In Gaza, it went from 645,000 to 2.1 million. It's 3x. That ain't genocide to me. Now, do 20,000 people, 30,000 people needlessly killed during this bullshit war that was started by Hamas? Is that horrible? One million percent. And any Jew or any Israeli Give me that number said, again. 600,000 to what? 645,000 to 2.1 million. From what to, from when, from when to where? This is in 1990 to 2022. Do you know Pull why they increased? Because they're having babies like crazy. No. You see, this is how, in, how, how like, when you watch that, mm-hmm. uh, while being uninformed makes, me look, makes you look very stupid. Tell me why. Tell, the me, how reason, the, tell me how the, the population has the gone reason, from 2 million to 5 million. Yeah, because most of the 1.5 extra million didn't come from Gaza. They were pushed away from other parts of Israel. So most of these people, they have increased because of refugees no, being y- kicked out. If you're talking about the settlers, those are tens of thousands. Stop I'm talking it. about Those Gaza. aren't millions of people dude, 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 listen, moving their houses. My wife's family is not from Gaza, and yet they found themselves in Gaza because they were sitting in other uh, other cities and villages outside Gaza. This is the systemic pushing of people from other parts of Israel, yeah. pushing them that's to Gaza. That's not millions of people. This is why I said that you're 1. intellectually dishonest. No, you're intellectually no, lazy. No, That's not the cause of millions of people I'm, being I'm, moved. I'm, 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 sorry. I'm familiar with the settler no, stuff no, this and is, the disengagement in 2006. You don't know what you're talking about. It's, no, These are people that are outside. Millions of people? What? Okay. 
The people who belong to Gaza are 700,000 people. Right now, Gaza is 2.2 million. That is not birth rate, my friend. Mm -hmm. These are people pushed from, and by the way, that's not the first time. 1948, uh, at the uh, night of the declaration of the state of Israel, 1.5 million, 1.5 million Palestinians were like moved overnight. So it's not the first okay. thing. So before you tell, give me numbers to you want to appear sure. smart, know what are behind the numbers, because these are not people that give in babies. Okay. These are be people being pushed from other places in order to be part of the open air prison that it is. Okay, so, then, so, it then, is not, then, it's, so it's not then delivered. If it's you want to fact check me, let me fact check you. Mm. Anytime that there's numbers increasing, Basif, going from 650, 450, whatever you want to call it, to 2 million, however it happens, that's the exact opposite of a genocide. So the whole genocide, the whole open air prison it's are with my talking friend. points. This are talking points of BS. No, the, and this is why I said you were intellectually lazy no, no, or no. you just hate Bas Israel. Basically you just you just this whole thing about you hate Israel and hate Islam, this is a very lazy way to talk to people. It's kind of you know, like your it, kind of like your thing. What what did I tell you that is so lazy? What did I tell you like you're fucking racist? Because I'm yeah, you've already said that multiple times. No, I times. didn't say yeah, I you said, did, you I said, said that multiple times. I said, times. said your undertone is racist. No, okay. that's not what so not not me, but what's going on inside of me? And someone like you, the way that you analyze numbers is very lazy because again, really, these when I actually use stats and data from, Let from me hear the most credible sources, yes, that's lazy. These we'll are numbers up. that were outside You've of Gaza. You've said no stats. It, it, You've it, given it, fucking it, opinions like the whole time. It's like saying that California has increased triple, or the size of, uh, like t people in Texas increased because of birth rate. No, they increased because people from California started moving. Voluntarily, you have pushed 1.5 million people outside of Gaza, inside of Gaza, in a matter of 12 years, and that's why the number has inflated. Mm -hmm. It's not because they were giving birth rate. So then, they where's, were, they then were where's pushed, the genocide? They were, they were evacuated. Where's this alleged genocide? That's happening, happening right now under okay. your eyes. So as of as of three months ago, there was no genocide. And so it's just a new. Well, thing. we didn't actually use the word genocide before three months ago. Okay, but you've we been calling for it. the river for the we sea. We didn't use it for decades. So well, well. Also, also, Israel have a lot of maps that is co uh, putting in the Greater Israel from the Nile and the Euphrates. That's that genocide for five countries there. And this is not by people in the street or people on YouTube. These are ministers. These are officials in the official government of Netanyahu. If you have someone, a, a, an, an Arab president like the Egyptian president or the Jordanian king, tells you from the river and the sea, it's like, oh, it's the Arab authorities. You are basically complaining people on Facebook and the official. Uh, viewpoint of the Israeli government. You're basically comparing apples to oranges. It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. You're basically comparing activists with people with power, with money, and with weapons. So I don't know how come you're comparing So them. what's your solution? Because you got all these answers and we have no solutions. What's your solution? Justice. Stop okay. killing people and, okay. and give them back their land. That's it. Okay. And, and, and giving them back the land, that is going to be a much more complicated thing. Who's going to lead your negotiations? Mahmoud Abbas, 88 years old? I have no idea, man. No, no. I have no idea. Yeah, that's the I point is no you idea. don't have an idea. Well, I'm, 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 when I say I have no idea, I'm being humble because there's a million people who can do it. But like, I'm not a politician. I'm a comedian. I come here to tell some of my opinions. But the thing is, you want to put me mm -hmm. and, and then you use that and you give me, I'm sorry to say, butchered political information and numbers yeah. that doesn't Stats say anything. Stats are really butchered in political Yeah, yeah. But, but it's interesting how you have all the solutions for Israel, but you have no solutions for Gaza or Hamas. Very interesting. Very okay. interesting how you can critique everything that's going on in Israel. Yes, they do have some things they need to rectify. Just like the United States, just like any democracy. You've got all the answers there, boss. If, when I said, what do they do over here in Gaza? What do they do? I have no idea. I'm just a comedian. Don't listen to me. So which one is it? You either know your shit or you're actually... Just so what was your question? What's the solution so for what's Israel? The solution? I said the Israel for Gaza. Back the land. For Gaza, how yeah. about you stop the killing and then we can okay, talk? Okay, so let's say we do that. Okay. So I, I, here's what I believe. I, need, I think we need to demilita demilitarize Gaza. We need to de-radicalize -ra because they're the leading. How are you going to de-radicalize? De How are you doing well, that? Maybe let's stop, so how about let's stop summer schools the, where they teach about oh, jihad how, how, and they start playing football okay, and soccer. How, how about the religious schools okay. in Israel that actually tell people that we should co kill all Arabs? And these well, you, you know all those idea. Jews that are running around bombing everywhere around the yeah. world? No, it doesn't fucking exist. Oh, it's really? only in Islam. Oh, really? But what about the Jews killing the Palestinians inside? I'm talking about the around the world. If oh, I said there was we're, a... We're bad people. Oh, we're bad people. No, Take that, us out. That's not what I'm saying. No, no, no. We're very... Okay, we are, what I'm saying... We are they a need terrorist to, they, 
religion. We are a terrorist religion. Take it out. You said it. Your Let's words. Let's do it. You yeah. said it. Let's your do words. It. Yeah. Your words. Let's do it. I mean, like your this words. Is, this is like you have Keep a, saying. you have a really interesting outlook for people who look like me. You look at me and I'm Muslim, and you you have all of these assumptions about me being a terrorist. While Islam not is not a terrorist. You, you know said the word you know fascist. I didn't say the. You know what's the difference between you Islam said the and words. terrorists? They go on on like some rogue groups and they kill and they do shitty stuff. But you have like a whole country with a whole military arsenal who is committing. Terrorism every single day backed up there by the is. US. There's your Israel talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Israel I'm talking gonna talk it. I'm th that's my that's, opinion. That's my opinion. Totally that's cool. That's my opinion. Totally cool. Yeah. It's all good. But you're trying to tell me that Islam doesn't have a terrorist problem? Islam, Muslims have a terrorist problem. Correct. It's like when you say Islam has a Muslim problem, when you say Judaism has a Muslim problem. All right. A lot of Muslims are assholes and so, they're doing sh horrible stuff. And the, I, I do not feel the need to defend those people because those people don't represent me. The thing is, if people Jews lose, were running thing, around all over the world, blowing themselves up as suicide bombers, as a Jew, I'd be like, guys, what the fuck are we doing here? What okay. are we doing here? Okay. This is accomplishing nothing. So let's but here's the, the, so let's but the, here's the reality. So let's Jews aren't doing that. And Christians Jews are aren't not. doing that. Jews are not. Let me ask you a They're question. They're not doing that Let in Gaza. Ask. They're not doing that in the West Bank. Everything you talk about is Gaza. I'm talking yeah, about the world. Yeah, because that's what's happening You're right now. You're so obsessed with this one topic. I am. I'm trying because to understand the world. Because my family lives there. Okay. Because my, fa my family lives there. But my family's in Israel. Really? So only your family counts? My family doesn't count? No, no, no. Okay, but like, did your family are living in an open air prison and being killed every day? The open air prison, the genocide. Get them. You see how you're making fun? Get them new talking Open it's air the prison. only talking point. Israel left it's Gaza in 2006. It didn't leave. It okay. left and it put it under blockade. It's called a disengagement. It, no, they, why no, do they have a blockade? Maybe because they're shooting missiles hundreds of times a day. Yeah, I'd pretty much put a yeah. country in a blockade you, you, if they were cut, shooting you, missiles you cut, you cut every single the air, day. You cut them from the sea, you cut them from the water. It's so like, okay, go live. How Let, do you do that? Let's move on from Israel because I know you're hyper obsessed with it. Why? I'm not hyper obsessed. You keep asking me about Israel. No, I ask you about the world and I'm asking you about Christianity and Muslims and Judaism. You want to focus on Israel. Why? can Muslims move to any Christian country they want, but Christians and Jews can move to zero Muslim countries. Why is that? What about Dubai? What about I'll Saudi ask it Arabia? again. What about all of these countries? What, what are you talking you, about? You mean the You're just mentioning Qatar and Dubai and all of there's like a lot of expats living you, there. So the middle, th this is my point, and I'm glad you're catching on. Yeah. That I'm not racist. I'm, I'm pointing out. Well, there are Christian countries who like, like shit, I wouldn't lose, no, lose that I, because of the economy. I, I'm pointing out that in certain Muslim countries, they're getting it right. Or at okay. least attempting to. Good for them. Okay? Yeah. Yes, good for them. Mm -hmm. Good for Qatar. Good for UAE. Good for Saudi and what MBS is doing. Good for them. They're examples of what could be done. Gaza, if they took the billions of government, of, of international aid, could be Dubai. But they decided to make a terror state. So the question that I'm where, asking where does, is... What, what, you, are you saying that like, there's so many money coming in and just like Hamas used it in order to make weapons? There's people of Hamas who are literal billionaires living in Qatar, flying around on private yeah, yeah. jets. They're, they're, How do you explain they're that? They're horrible people and I don't condone them. All right. Okay. I'm talking about the millions of people in Gaza. Who but you know, oh, horrible them. people, Hamas. Let's not talk, talk about that. We'll move on. But Israel. Oh, let's let me let me, let me give you a dissertation Dude, over here. Like, you 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 but, have. But you, you I'm have, trying to give you. You're some, just like shouting over me. I'm not because yeah, every time I'm okay, talking, you, you are basically you talk. going around all of the stuff that's happening with Muslim uh, people that is bad, and then you uh, base what you're doing is you are undertoning. You are trying to find an excuse to keep that killing in Gaza continue because I, because Muslims are bad, Muslims are terrorists, Muslims are poor. So let's just like kill those people in Gaza. You are this is exactly so what you're doing. intellectually lazy. It's com it's comical. Cool. Because I'm not Let's even talking you about see, you Gaza. See, you keep insulting me. We're, you we're keep insulting me because gonna, I'm because trying. Because she's like you are a you are a motherfucking racist. You know, like you, how would you what feel if, if I, I said, said that's that? racist? I'm Everything saying that there's that you say about racist, the way that you speak about Muslims, that we are terrorists and we are horrible people. Basically, you're telling people that we deserve to die. Basta and Israel has everything to do in order to kill those people. That's, I've, so, anyways, I, if I've my, said if, zero hope, of those words, hopefully, if you are putting all those words in my mouth, I said zero of those words. cousin who's a doctor get killed. Tomorrow, I'm going to okay. send you a postcard. So if my actual cousin gets killed in Israel, they that's okay. Not. They will not. Because that's you okay. know what? They are safe because he's not living in an open air oh, prison. Oh, wh why are they safe? Maybe because they have the Israeli Defense Force, the yeah. Iron Dome that Good stops for you. Good for you. all the missiles. They don't have that. Yeah, but they don't have that. Maybe you should have built that instead of tunnels. Oh, with what? With all with the billions.
billions of what, foreign aid that was given. Billion, what billion foreign aid are you? These, these, How much money does Iran bill- give? How much money does Qatar? All, give? How much does the international money community is actually trickled through Israel? You understand that Israel is actually your, holding your that Your argument money holds from, no weight because all you're doing you, is defending you Hamas. Under, you have not, zero I'm argument. Not, I'm the last one to defend Hamas, by the way, and I've actually said the terrorist group, and I don't be, and I'm a big fan of Hamas. But I'm just giving you some facts. Every single money that goes into Gaza goes through Israel. As a matter of fact, Biden has a big problem with Netanyahu because he's withholding the tax money that paid by the Palestinian people to the Palestinian Authority, and Netanyahu is holding it back. Have you heard about that? Have you read about that? Just two days ago, if you're reading your stuff, but you don't. But the thing is, Netanyahu is holding back the tax money from the Palestinian in West Bank, and he's not giving it to Hamas. You're so funny, man. You're so funny. No, you're 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 saying all 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 the money that's going to Hamas is coming through Israel? Sure. Filtered through Israel. Sure. All the money. Filtered through Israel. Yeah, all the money from Iran going right through Israel. Sure, that's how, likely. How, how, all the money from Qatar. How about you read the transcript by Netanyahu in okay. 2019, the Likud okay. party, telling them that he is actually over, overlooking the amount of money coming from Qatar, and he is doing that in order to split the, the Palestinian Authority. Listen to I'm him. I'm familiar with how, this. How, I'm not disagreeing how, how with— about I, you, How about you not, you listen, educate yourself I'm about not, that. I'm not disagreeing that Netanyahu has done some fucked up oh, things. Oh, here it is. Okay. Here it is. Oh, my God. Here it is. Biden is in frustrating call, told Bibi to solve Palestinian tax revenue Yeah, because issue? Israel is withholding that's, the taxes. You understand every single money that's transaction. That's your argument right there? Every, no, that's <laughs> part of the argument. Every single money transaction, whether it's taxes, whether it's aids, yeah. it has to go through the Israeli so government. So all the money that Iran is funding Hamas, you're saying that goes through Israel? Is that what you're saying? Through Qatar, through Israel. Okay, that's f- so false. It's so flagrantly false. I, I want you to educate what? yourself more. Okay, I will. I'll go read up on this. But if you mean to tell me that Israel is intercepting the money that Iran is sending to Hamas and says, yeah, we'll send it to you guys. But, but, Believe me, they're re- not doing it. By the way, it's 11.15. Read the transcript of the, of, it's it's 11.15. We're going to wrap up. Here's what I will say. Um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to be very honest with both of you guys. I mean, I'm, 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 I've been listening to both of you guys, and I love this. I love this. Let me tell you why. The average American right now is sitting there. There's a group that agrees with you. There's a group that agrees with you. Regardless of what it is, a lot was said, and it was actually pretty educated discussion for me. I'm normally not this quiet. I love the fact that I heard this conversation. I loved it. I enjoyed it. I appreciate you for uh, uh, having uh, – uh, it was very obvious. This is what happens, Basim, in the future when you're doing podcasts. Follow the same rule. The eight hours of sleep you got last night was very helpful. It was I, obviously I, I, felt. I, 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 I was hanging out over. I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, there is pain in my, my back as I, I'm, I'm speaking out of pain. I got a guy waiting for you right now. Just so not Can I say one thing to Basif? Yeah. I don't care how much we argue, and that's fine. I would have a beer with you. I would party with you. I'll go see would your you comedy show. His back, though? Whatever this would you guy needs. My back? <laughs> I'll give you a hand. I'll, I'll give you a handy under the table if I make you feel better. It's all good. Dude, I love this dude, dude, conversation. Dude, listen, listen, this listen, is the this only be, way this is, this that is, situations can be solved. It is. It can be uncomfortable. It can be argumentative. But I'd rather sit down at the table with people I disagree with than completely ignore them. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, the heated discussions, all of this at the end of the day is words. Yep. Words don't hurt anybody. And the thing is, if it hurts you, Mm-hmm. It means that you need to check your ego. Mm-hmm. One thing I learned is that put your ego aside. So if you felt that I am attacking you, attacking you, it's not. It's like I'm always attacking your your argument, brother. It's I'll never, give you it, a it, hug on it's, air, it's, off it's, air. It's, it's I'm never, good. It's never about you because there is absolutely no point of like losing each other and losing each other. I, like we have come from obviously different different background but I would rather have this heated discussion and then sit, sit, stand up and because at the end of the day we are all Americans we're sitting here and hopefully we're doing that in order to learn something that will not happen we totally agree country. we're on the same page we're on the 100% Again, appreciate the you same for being page. a good Thank sport you. appreciate you for coming out gang take care have a great weekend if you're in Florida if you're in South Florida tonight you're performing and tomorrow uh, at uh, yeah with that back <laughs> I, I have uh, two shows in Arabic tonight and three shows in English Saturday and Sunday and what's the location uh, Miami Improv Miami Improv Miami go Improv. stop by and tell them you heard them on PBD Podcast maybe I'll take be there everybody. you never know come, come, take a come to the English show Allah. you'll enjoy it take care everybody bye 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 I have one Jewish